Good evening, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming. This is the Hingham Historic Districts Commission. Uh, this evening is August 16th. It's Thursday. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Uh, first uh, order of business is to uh, declare voting members for, uh, for tonight's meeting. So voting members tonight will be Michael, myself, Ronnie, and is Virginia um, on, on her way? on her way. Okay. Yeah, and Ben, if you could be the uh, the fifth voting member tonight, that would be that would be terrific. Um, the other thing we need to um, take care of is if anybody's got some conflicts tonight, anything they'd like to recuse themselves for for any of the other uh, proceedings. No. Okay. Um, and the other thing, just to to clear up, would be. I know there was a there was a few folks that were missing at last uh, last uh, last meeting we had last month, um, and I don't know if uh, the this, this signing of the signed okay. okay, so we're good there. Yes, all right, awesome. Um, Anna wasn't able to, okay. and I don't know about Virginia. Okay, so all right, we'll check on Virginia when she sure. All right, then. Um, so those are some of the initial things to take care of. Let's uh, let's get started with uh, the town's proposal to demolish 58 Main Street, located in the Lincoln Historic District. Uh, this is the Thomas Barker House. Um, so, Mike or John, I don't know if how you'd like to proceed with this, but um, if you'd like to, if you'd like to start off, since it is your application um, to do that, yeah, please come on up. I'd like to introduce myself to the to the board um, and the chair. Uh, my name is Michael Clancy. I'm the building commissioner in the town of Hingham. Um, I'm going to have a. Uh, uh, oh. uh, Michael Clancy, I'm the building commissioner in the town of Hingham. Um, I have some uh, brief statement in the beginning, and then I will uh, let um, the board of survey speak. Okay. Terrific. Um, I am the building commissioner in the town of Hingham. I am responsible for all buildings within the town. They are to be safe for use and occupied on the interior and the exterior of the structures. A site visit and inspection was conducted at 58 Main Street by a board of survey team on July 20th, 2018 at approximately 8.30 a.m. They are here tonight to explain their reports. The survey team consisted of members of the Hingham Fire Department, a structural engineer, a disinterested person. Also in attendance were representatives of the building, health, police, sewer, and DPW departments. I would like to um, give you a history of the property which is in the building department's files. The building department's files on the above property date back to April 23, 1982, some 36 years ago. The property has received eight building permits, five on the home, three on the barn, the work has not been completed and the building permits have expired. The building department has received 10 complaints over the years. The Historic District Commission has sent the owner 14 letters dating back to April 4th, 1989. The owner has been served enforcement letters nine times by a constable. The building department has sent the owner 30 enforcement letters on the unsafe structures from May 26, 1994 until July 26, 2018. The building department has sent to the owner 53 letters along with citations 
on the unregistered motor vehicles. The unregistered motor vehicles are still on the property. There is one police report in the file. The police chief could not be here tonight. He was going to come, but the, um, I believe there was a, a birth in the family, so he's not going to be able to make it. The building department has applied for and received two inspection entry warrants from, Boston, from Brockton Housing Court. The owner refused to allow the building department to enter the property. The building department has conducted three board of surveys on the property. We have received two letters and two emails from the owner. He does not agree with the enforcement letters. Um, I know the owner is here tonight. I'm sure he could speak on those. There are three engineer's reports in the file dating back to 1993 from the, owners, from the owner stating that the building can be repaired. The owner received a commitment letter on December 16, 2013 from a financial institution for $250,000 to renovate the property. I don't know what happened there. Um, the building department has taken photographs over the years. You may view them at any time. I have copies of them here now. I think everybody knows what the property looks like. Um, and the, the building department is requesting re approval from the Historic District Commission to remove the two unsafe st structures on the property. Um, I, uh, it, it's unfortunate that we're here again today to talk about this structure. I was here five years ago this month talking about the same structure and the owner has refused to fix it. I came to Hingham because I, they, re, they um, repair and keep the structures in the town here. That's one of the reasons why I applied for the job. And I, I, it, it, again, I, it's just unfortunate, but the safety of the people in the town is on my lap. <coughs> and it's just get deteriorated to, to a point that it's dangerous. It's dangerous for the first responders. Firefighters to go in that building, some uh, child goes in there or gets sick, or even the owner, if he goes in the building and it collapses on him. Um, so I, I don't know if there's any questions for me at this point, but um, I don't know if John has anything to add. Just, just briefly, and I might cover most of it, John Coughlin, Town Council. Just to clarify what we're asking for tonight, the building uh, inspector is here under Chapter 143, which is a statute that allows the town to demolish buildings that are deemed unsafe. So we followed every step in that statute all the way through. We've sent the notices required under the statute. Um, and that's why Mike Clancy is here tonight as the applicant on behalf of the town. What we're asking for is approval for Mike to be able to demolish the property. But just to be clear, all that does is give Mike the authority to demolish the property. Doesn't require him to do it. Doesn't mean he's going to start it tomorrow. Doesn't prohibit him from working with the homeowner. If the homeowner comes to his office tomorrow and wants to fix it up with a legitimate plan, it just moves it to the next step. So we're asking for that approval tonight, not to delay it another month, not to, con to continue to uh, consider it, but to move it to the next step and then put it into Mike's hands at that point, it would be beyond this board, and then he can use his discretion as to what to do next. Okay. So before we open it up to questions, and I'll let everyone who would like to speak speak um, regarding this application, um, I just want to give you a, a timeline and some facts that um, from Historic Districts Commission standpoint that Andrea uh, compiled. Um, there's a lot of information here and, you know, if, if anybody would like to see the, all of it, we, we can get it to you, but <clears throat> just in terms of a summary, um, in 1981, um, Mr. Pitts uh, purchased the uh, Thomas Barker House and um, between the period of 1989 and 1999, a lot of this, uh, I believe predates Andrea Young, who's the administrator um, on the commission, but four certificates from the um, Historic Districts Commission were 
were generated and granted um, to, uh, to Mr. Pitts to, uh, to complete work on, on the house. Um, in 2003, um, another certificate was granted to Mr. Pitts uh, an approval to do work on the house. And in 2007, another certificate was granted to, to Mr. Pitts to do, to do work on the house. So um, those six certificates were granted between the period of 1989 and 2007. And um, to our knowledge, best of our knowledge, no work was done on the house. Um, in 2012, um, interestingly enough, um, Mr. Pitts filed an application to demolish the house um, uh, at, uh, at 58 Main Street. Uh, he later withdrew the application because uh, he was seeking, seeking funds from the uh, Community Preservation Act and also the Greenbush Historic Prevention um, funding. So that application was drawn. Um, Mr. Pitts was looking to demolish at that time, but reversed. Uh, in 2013, um, he did in fact receive a grant um, from, the, uh, from the Greenbush Trust. In 2015, he declined um, those Greenbush funds. Um, and in 2016, again, another application was submitted by Mr. Pitts to demolish the house. Um, so that was, that was recently, a couple of years ago. Um, this commission voted unanimously uh, to deny the application to, to, uh, to demolish. Uh, we wanted to see uh, Mr. Pitts uh, restore the house, and he agreed to do that. So in 2018, here we are today with, uh, with the town and an application to, to demolish. So those are the, um, the timeline and some of the uh, the, uh, the facts that, um, that are uh, involved here and how the Hingham Historic Districts Commission was involved. So um, like, like Mike, um, you know, a number of applications and certificates were granted as the building department did, but no work was done. So um, at this point, why don't we open it up for any <coughs> questions or comments related to the town's application. I will give everybody, um, you know, free time to speak. I know some people here have uh, some time constraints, um, and I'll get to you first if you'd like. Uh, but uh, please feel free to come forward. When you do, just state your name and uh, your address. And there's two microphones right here, so please come on up. Um, hold on a second, Mary. Would you like to? Um, would you like to? Yeah, sir. So this is Select and Power. I know you've got a. Got to Good leave, but. Uh, my name is Mary Power. I live at One King Philip Path. I am a member of the Board of Selectmen, and I'd just like to say at the onset that I'm here speaking as an individual board, member of the Board of Selectmen. Um, I haven't conferred with my colleagues on this, and uh, my statement tonight are, are my own personal views. I think it's worth noting to this commission that in the three and a half years I've had the privilege of serving on the Board of Selectmen, I have never appeared in front of a board or committee. Um, I understand that all of you have a job to do, and, and I respect the jobs you do, but this issue compels me to be here tonight, and um, that is something that I've not been compelled to do for the last, uh, for the last, three, and a half, uh, for the last three and a half years. I, um, the, the reason that I'm here, uh, just a couple things to potentially kind of inform your decision. You know, I get a lot of different questions around town. You know, why, why don't we have more fields? Or why, why can't the library be open on Friday? Why are my taxes so high? I would say that, that the, the particular property that's being discussed tonight is one of the things at which I get many, many questions from people. Um, why is this property as it is? Why can't the town do anything about it? And what's interesting to me is that I always walk away from those conversations and whoever I'm having the conversation with, I feel like they walk away thinking that their government isn't working for them. And I, I wanted to share that with you tonight because I think it's a, it's a view that goes beyond some of the aspects of, of this decision that you're looking at today. Um, I, I would also just say that while I think all of us in town, and, and you know, I certainly respect the private property rights of individuals, I think for me and my role, when when the decisions that a property owner makes have adverse impact on other people around them, it gets my attention. Um, the house next door, 48 Main Street, 
It was purchased by a couple in 1976. And, you know, a few years ago, as, as the stairs and um, the, the, the house just got a little bigger than they could handle, they were looking for different housing options. And they knew that they couldn't sell their house because they knew that there would, there would be very little interest or that if there was interest in it, it would have an adverse economic impact on them. A decision was made to keep the house and the family. That wasn't the preferred choice. That was what that family felt was the only choice. And you know, when I heard that story, I really thought there was something wrong about that. And again, I don't know the extent to which that can inform your decision, but I'm here to share with you some of the things that I've heard. I'll just make one last point. Sometimes in here, um, we, li we like to quote history. We like to quote historical figures. I'm not gonna go too far back. But one of my favorite Maya Angelou, Angelou quotes is, when someone shows you who they are, believe them. Thank you for listening. Thank you. OK. Please feel free to come up. Hi. Hi, how you doing? Good. It's good to see you all again. Uh, my name is Kurt Haybelt, and I'm a Weymouth resident. I'm also an associate of Mr. Pitts, and uh, I have appeared before the committee before. It is nice to see you again. Um, and like all of you in this room, I know we share a love of American history. And uh, like many, not speaking for you, but for many people in this room, um, I do not want to see the Thomas Barker House demolished. I would like to see it restored and re rehabilitated into something that the town of Hingham and the state of Massachusetts and indeed the country can be proud of. Now I do understand the concerns and I understand that over the years there's been some bad blood and some misunderstanding between Mr. Pitts and the town. Okay, And because of that I think there's been um, on John's part, some skepticism and caution when working with the town, and likewise, I think on the town's part, there's been skepticism and caution when working with John. But I would like um, to think that reasonable people can, with a little bit of effort, come together and maybe come to a satisfactory conclusion that preserves this historical home. Now, um, to that end, I would uh, recommend that the Building Commission and the Historical Commission agree to a 30-day extension as requested in the letter by John's attorney, Glenn F. Russell. Now, I know this was just laid at your feet, so um, I'm sure there'll be no objections in case there's members of the public or members of the press here that might want to know what that letter says. I'd like to very briefly read it. Um, it says, Dear esteemed members, I am the attorney representing Mr. Pitts in the effort to save the Thomas Barker House located at 58 Main Street in Hingham. As the His Hingham Historical Commission is already aware, the Thomas Barker House is a significantly, historically significant home built 20 years before the American Revolution. It is my client's intention to restore the Thomas Barker House in accordance with historical guidelines. We are providing a recent letter and a structural engineer's report stating that the house is structurally sound and capable of withstanding proper rehabilitation. My client also understands that the securing of the structure for safety concerns is the first step in this process and we are willing to begin work on this immediately. With regards to the bond and the re of the property, my client's intention is to secure and disassemble the structure and construct a new barn on the existing foundation. Furthermore, in the unfortunate event that the Thomas Barker House were to be taken down, it is extremely important that the disassembly be performed in a certain way. There are companies and individuals who have expressed interest in performing a careful and controlled disassembling of the structure, which would preserve historically valuable beams, woodwork, and other historical historic artifacts. In consideration of the above facts, we are respectfully requesting that the Historic Commission grant a 30-day extension of their decision on this property. This will give our team adequate time to prepare a suitable plan to present to the town. We are also requesting that the Building Department grant a permit to begin the securing of the house and the disassembling of the barn immediately. We are hoping that the Hingham Historic Commission and the Hingham Building Department will work with us to prevent the local and national loss of this pre-revolutionary home. Sincerely yours, Glenn F. Russell, Jr., Esquire. 
Thank you very much for allowing me to read that because other people didn't receive it, so thank you for that. I felt it was important. Um, in addition to Mr. Pitt securing and rehabilitating the house, I would also suggest that other more creative options be explored. Um, would the town of Hingham consider the purchase of the Thomas Barker house um, from Mr. Pitts at a fair market rate? Could the house be placed into a nonprofit organization that would dedicate itself to getting state and federal grants for its restoration? These are all reasonable and doable possibilities that can be discussed further. So in conclusion, the house has been standing there for over 260 years. It's weathered rain and snow and storms, and it's seen generations of young people turn into old people. It's been standing there for a long time. And I think that as the historical commission and as citizens of this country, I think that we owe it to that house to give it one more chance. It stood there for 260 years. I think we can give it 30 more days. Thank you very much. Um, just for the record, this is a, um, we have a different letter, it's slightly different than the, the letter that you read. Um, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's close. Um, and this is the Historic Districts Commission, it's not the Historical Commission? I apologize. Okay, that's fine. It's uh, two, different, two different commissions here in Hingham. Okay. Uh, just clarification. Um, next, anybody, uh, anybody else would like to speak? Please come forward. Thank you. Evening, sorry to be so informal. I hadn't planned to speak. I'm Jim Watson, I live at 291 Rockland Street, member of the Housing Authority, which is related to this. Uh, I've, I did a study in Brockton, I work in town planning on their housing strategies, and one tool they have is receivership, in which the community can take over a property that's grossly under maintained, even if it doesn't own it, even without tax title, and have the work done and put it in the hands of a nonprofit. And it's, I think it's called Chapter. 1,005. I think Paul Healy would know. But it does give the town the power to directly act, as I understand it. And the communities that have it have done that. They've acquired deteriorated but worthy pro properties, done the necessary work, and turned them over. And I would just suggest that it's a path that might be worth looking into. Because I've also heard from various people that it's more sound than it looks like, and it certainly has been here for a while. And it's a significant piece of the townscape. So I hope that uh, that tool or something like it can be used. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Yep, Peter. My I think so. <coughs> Hi, Peter Bickford, 65 LaZelle Street. And uh, I'm here to just tell you that uh, I feel the boards, the town's frustration on this property. I've been, um, I've been involved in it since actually the early 70s when I bid on that house when it first came up for sale. Unfortunately, I didn't get it and uh, it sits as it is, but um, with, with um, everything that's going on, I just am here to tell you I don't want the house to be sacrificed for political reasons. Um, it doesn't deserve to be end, end up in a dumpster. I would be willing to work with the owner, with the town, with the legal process to dismantle the house and, and uh, save it. I don't know if you know, some of you do, that uh, we were involved in the started house on uh, Free Street 1727 house still sits in two boxcars in my backyard looking for a home for it. Um, my wife will probably kill me if I have a second house <laughs> sitting in, a, in, in some trailers, but I'd be willing to work with, with any of the commissions, the district commission, the historical commission, to relocate the house, but I really feel strongly that, um, that the house should not be sacrificed to end up in a dumpster. So again, I'd be willing to work with any, any of the factions to uh, preserve, dismantle, and save the house. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hi. Hi, Trisha Barnes, 9 Wedding Lane and 2 Brewster Road, Hingham. Hi, Andrea. Hi. <laughs> 
Um, I helped bring this before um, the Thomas Barker House. I did all the original research um, of it in 2013 going up, and it was my crazy idea to go after Greenbush and CPC funds to help Mr. Pitts restore the house. I am the president of the American Cultural Society, which is a nonprofit organization that is currently applied for C3 status. We are working with the town of Weymouth currently to save the Emory estate and rehab that property. We want to put it in the mix that if you give us 90 days with your commission and with the owner, we would like to try to purchase the property and or take it in pieces and work with the team in order to uh, not lose the historic um, value of it. The biggest reason is because of the seller, <laughs> which you know I'm obsessed with the pre-revolutionary refrigeration tactics that they built in the basement. You can't dismantle and rebuild that. Um, so to me, the value is in keeping the property where it is, as it is, and rebuilding it from there with the National Historic Pr um, Preservation Guidelines. So I'm more than happy to hand over paperwork um, and do whatever you guys require. Um, and I know this is completely last minute, but we do have the um, National Cultural Heritage um, Association, which is a group of attorneys in Washington, D.C. that are backing us that actually run the original Mount Vernon and 18 other massive historic properties that are getting us financing as well as um, our legal services um, in order to secure properties like this. Our biggest, our entire mission is to save, save historic properties and not see them be destroyed. So um, we are a nonprofit. We're brand new, but we have huge backing, and we, were, we are willing to take this on. Thank you. Um, Trisha, yep. could you please give me the name of your organization? Again? The American Cultural Society. Thank we're you. membership based, so please all join, like us on Facebook. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your interest. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Jamie Kelleher, and I'm a registered architect here representing. Axiom Architects uh, in Hanover. And uh, we have a long history of working with historic buildings, historic renovations. Uh, we are here in favor of saving the building in whatever way seems most sensible. And uh, basically to say that we have met with Mr. Pitts uh, several times in the last few weeks and from what we've seen, he seems to be very serious about following through with a plan to begin taking care of this property. So uh, we would very much love to have the opportunity to work with him on the project and also with the uh, Historic Districts Commission. So thank you. Yeah. Uh, Richard Young, 48 Maine. Um, Hi, I'm just curious, this is all last minute stuff, so, um, you know, as usual, it's like, you know, you come in thinking one thing is going to happen and the room tips upside down, so, uh, like, if this happens, like, with this federal money and stuff, like, is it a house? Does someone live there? Or is it a museum? Like, um, Derby? I mean, what's the, like, what's the, the end result kind of a thing? Because we're neighbors, you know what I mean? We're right next door, we're very, very close, so we're worried about safety, you know, fire safety, we're worried about board of health, rodent issues, and all that kind of stuff. So we would love to see something happen with the house. Um, but we just, you know, we obviously have concerns if it's going to be, you know, a museum with people coming in and out, parking, and all those kinds of issues, so. Thanks, Richard. I mean, I can speak to the fact that this Hold, hold, hold on a second. We'll, we'll, co we'll come back. Okay. We'll, we'll come back to all this. Um, next. Anybody else? Good evening. Hi, John. I'm John Bibbs. Um, I own the property. Uh, first of all, I'd like to clarify something. You said that I borrowed 250000 You made it sound like I took a trip to Russia or something. I used that money to secure another loan on another property I was working on. Uh, when you have more property to put up, banks like it. Uh, as far as it being a hazard, as long as people don't let their kids go in, break it into it, 
and burn it down and it won't be a fire hazard. I mean, the Hingham Courthouse burnt down because someone decided to burn it down. That was a pretty safe building before that. Um, as far as cars, I was driving around town today. They were showing up public officials, some might even be in the room tonight, that we counted at least five cars in the yard. That we assume they're unregistered. Um, all I know is it doesn't matter. I could care less what someone else does. Um, they're not bothering anyone. We were working on it. I was denied a permit. I was in, in 16, went before everyone. Andrea approved uh, the repairs on the building. I went across the hall and I was denied a permit. We wouldn't be here tonight if I wasn't turned down. I called the state. They said, you have a right to get a permit. If you intend to live there and make that your house, you can get it. After that, I brought it to Mr. Clancy's attention. All of a sudden, he sends me a letter. Oh, I want a plan. Uh, I want this. I want that. It's like taking another bite of the apple. Do you need a, a, uh, uh, a building license in order to put a couple of glass panes in? Um, it, it's crazy that it's gotten to this point. A simple thing like we cut the grass, we clean up the place, they won't allow me to dump the brush at the dump because you don't live in the house. I mean, there's more hypocrisy flying around this town than anywhere. Either way, if it comes down, I have some great people that want to build a new house there. It really doesn't matter. All I know is if it does come down, I want the building, all the, the beams, the woodwork saved. Peter knows what's going on. He appreciates historic properties. Um, Trish understands historic properties. Greg does. I think everyone wants to see the right thing. For a town that takes pride in having historic buildings, to want to tear one down doesn't make a lot of sense. That's kind of crazy. But whatever. All I know is we have people willing to take it down. I want to get a permit, take the barn down. I have an engineer that's going to design a new barn. We want to do that. Uh, we can go forward or we can take it down. And I have some great people that want to use the bones of the house and re rebuild it somewhere else. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thanks. Um, John, why don't you grab a seat and then we'll, we'll sure. come back to you. See if there's any other comments in the audience. I appreciate that, though. Um, other questions, comments? Okay, Trish, why don't you... Um, there's one. Okay, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. No, sorry. I'm from the New Journal. I just okay. wondered if... Um, why don't you come up? You yeah. want to come up to the mic? Sorry. Okay. Carol Meyer from the Hingham Journal. Hey, I just Carol. wondered if, I, if the town um, does take the house down or whatever. I mean, does he get reimbursed for, you know, what's taken down? I mean, he must lose something. So I'm just wondering how it would be reimbursed, if at all, or how that works. Um, I think that's to be determined. Um, in the letter that, that we received from the town, I think if the town does go through and, and uh, demolish the house, it would be a, a lien for the cost of the demolition put on the house. So I think Mr. Pitts would be responsible for that. Uh, beyond that, I'm not sure in terms of the, uh, the value of the house. That's just to be determined. Trish, did you want to follow up? Oh, with the yep. your question on how the historic covenants work. Yeah, someone's going to live there, right? It's going to be a museum or something? It depends. So currently, the house is in the Excuse historic me, district. Um, and sir, could you please address your comments <coughs> to the chair? Thank you. Oh, sorry. Oh, that's, that's all right. All right. <laughs> So the house being in a historic district already has to get permission to do certain things. But because it never accepted CPC or Greenbush money and because it's grandfathered basically, there are no current historic covenants on the house as far as um, full rehabilitation of it where it is now, um, which is part of the point of trying to get a significant amount of money from CPC and Greenbush to, because it needs a significant amount of money. Um, and they only offered us in 2013 or 14, whatever it was, $6,000, which was not worth the amount of historic covenants we would then take on. But historic current covenants, whether they're town or state or federally um, active because of the, the grants that you get from even you know, the preservation funds federally, do not enforce it to be a museum. Uh, private ownership, private owners can get that uh, money as well in order to rehab a house because of its historic value and property. 
uh, it's really up to the owner what he wants to do with it. Does he want to restore it and then sell it as a historic, you know, beautiful home that we have so many of here in Hingham, or does he want to occupy it himself is really up to the owner. Uh, but it doesn't enforce it to be a museum. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to correct something. Um, Tricia, uh, there were two grants, one in 2013, I think, for $7,000, and that was to weatherize the house. And then the following year, there was another $7,000 grant to, um, to fix the foundation. Right, the foundation work. And that yeah. w those were Greenbush Historic Preservation right. Trust Funds. Yeah, but it was just the, the size of that when we were asking for, I think, 50000 or something out of the 250000 we needed. That wasn't quite enough because when you look at the historic restrictions that can be put on the house for taking Greenbush funds, which all of this is online if anybody wants to look up what Greenbush actually um, enforces for historic covenants once you borrow their money. Um, it's pretty severe, and so then to then have to do everything by those standards with less than the money that you need to do it doesn't make a whole lot of sense if, for a reasonable person anyway, <laughs> um, in my opinion. But I just, um, I, I'm honestly horrified that in this town, and I, I've lived here for over 20 years, and I, I just can't believe that they're even asking to tear a pre-revolutionary house down I know the history of it and the bad blood and the whole story, but I just think it's a, it's a matter of um, we have too many smart people in this town to not come up with a more creative solution than losing this property, in my opinion. But sorry, I know that's not what you asked me to come up and say, but. Thank you. Can I just say one thing? Please come on up. OK. Um, I'm Janet Kelly Young. I, my parents own the property next door um, for 45 years. And, um, and I guess obviously I like the property too. But John's had 40 years to do something with this property. And, um, and he's been approached to many, many people that want to buy it and redo the property. So if, if he had this love for redoing and seeing the, the Barker House back to where it was, I guess I just don't understand why it hasn't been done in the last 35 years. I guess that's, that's my thing. I, I, just, I just don't get that. But in any case, I hope to see something done. Um, with the property or, you know, see some kind of movement. So, thank you. Thanks, Janet. Can I just rebut that? Ho hold on a second, Trish. Um, any, any, other, um, any other questions, comments this time? Okay, John, I'll get, to, I'll get you to next. All right, come on up. I, I just want to say that, again, in 2013, was it, when we first went up to CPC in Greenbush, I got involved with this because uh, I've known John since 1979, and, um, and I knew the property. And so I did a ton of research on it. And what, what I found was, at the time in the 80s, there was a whole, none of you were um, involved in this, obviously. <laughs> and it was the brand new Historic Districts Commission that had shut down all of the work that John had already started to do. So all the tens of thousands of dollars he started putting into the house, and Peter Bickford was involved, I believe, in that with redoing all the windows and, and the rehab that had gone on, um, was then shut down by the Historic Districts Commission. So money was spent. It's not that John hasn't ever put any effort into fixing this house. That effort had been done. And every time he goes to get permits to do it, one department or one committee isn't talking to the other one. And politics keeps shutting this project down. And I think it's only fair that, as a taxpayer who owns two houses in this town, that everybody should know that. Everybody should know the truth that it's not that no effort has ever been made. The effort has been made on multiple occasions. But there seems to be too much politics for some reason to get this. Yep. The project done. The truth is, Trish, that um, six um, approvals have been granted by this, this commission to do work on this house since 1989. That's, that's a fact. But if you approve it, then why doesn't the building department automatically issue the permit? That's what I don't understand. So how can they shut it down and say, no, we won't give you a permit, if you guys say, yes, you can build? It doesn't make sense. But that's the record. Just for the, for the record. Uh, Mike, do you want to? Well, come on up to the mic. Before it gets too late, I don't know if you want the Board of Survey team to speak to the to the commission about what they did at the Board of Survey at the property. Um, before that happens, um, when Mr. Pitts was up here, he was correct when I stated he needed a licensed contractor to do the work on the home. I did not know it was going to be owner-occupied at that time.
January 10th, 2017. There's two structures on the property, the house, the accessory building out back. I asked Mr. Pitts for two engineered reports. I received, uh, dear Mr. Pitts, I received your engineer's report on December 16th, 2016, which was, which was received in the building department on um, December 29th, 2016. The report states that the 1770 home can be renovated. However, I would like to bring your attention to the building department's letter of November 22nd, 2016. The engineer's report did not show the uh, accessory building in the back, just the home. I wrote, we would be more than happy to issue you, Mr. Pitts, a building permit where you state that you, that the home is going to be owner occupied. Please provide a detailed report from an engineer with a plan stating that you, the homeowner, can perform the work and repair work in a safe manner on the home and the accessory structure. That was dated January 10th, 2016. Excuse me, 17. Do you want to have some of your um, uh, town officials that you've been working with um, sure. follow up on the uh, from a fire aspect and from an engineering aspect? Would that be a, I think that'd be absolutely that'd be helpful to us. Absolutely. Okay. Um, the chief, fire chief first. Yeah, please. Thank you. How are you? Good evening. How are you? Um, Steve Murphy, uh, Hingham Fire Chief. Um, we have uh, had members of the Hingham Fire Department that have participated in the two um, surveys uh, that was done. One was in 2016, I believe it was. The other one was the 2018 one just um, about a month ago. Um, in both situations, um, our staff, um, two of the members are here with us tonight. We have Lieutenant DiNapoli, who's our fire marshal um, for the town of Hingham, and I have um, Captain Levinson with me. Uh, they were present at both of the inspections, uh, and we were very, very concerned with the safety, uh, public safety aspect of the building. Um, it, you know, I have a lot of fears of any kids or anyone else that gets into the building. It's completely completely unsafe in our opinion um, and it's a potential um, fire hazard that either intentionally let by an arsonist um, that could cause a problem or um, unintentionally and hopefully this never happens but by kids or anything that are playing in the area because it does have access to the upper building especially from the cemetery right there um, so from a public public safety perspective uh, the fact of how unsecure the building is right now and the condition of it um, we have a lot of concerns um, so I'm sure they the other two individuals can speak as well um, to reiterate my comments uh, we have um, your letter dated yep. July 20th mm -hmm. uh, to Mike Clancy uh, with, with yes. those observations yep. and your conclusions so thank you okay. Good evening. <coughs> My name is Peter McCarthy, and I'm with Structures Engineering, and we have conducted two surveys on <coughs> 58 Main Street. In 2016, we were requested to go to the property and conduct a survey for its structural integrity. We found <coughs> both structures to be significantly open to the weather with zero protection. We were not allowed to go inside because of safety reasons. From the outside, we were able to easily observe a number of the members had uh, failed. There was soft rot. The condition of the property was, in our opinion, very bad shape. Two years later, we were asked to return to the property and conduct a follow-up survey. We found the condition of the property to be pretty much the same, open to the weather, continuing to deteriorate, hadn't been any effort to secure the property. 
So in, <clears throat> as we look at the foundation and the frame and the primary members, it's our opinion that this property is not structurally sound. That does not mean that there aren't components and pieces and members and beams that aren't salvageable. But as a building unit, it's not. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. And I believe we have your report, too, um, in our files. So thank you. Um, yeah, hold on. <coughs> questions. Yeah, please. Tom Barry, I was asked to look at the building as a disinterested party, licensed builder. Um, I worked in Boston several years ago on the abandoned building program, 87 through 95, uh, graduate of the Franklin Institute. My, my degree is in architectural structural design. Um, uh, again, not an engineer, not an architect, but that was my, my emphasis. So I was asked to look at it. I did look at it. Um, and I just felt that, as the, engin the engineer stated, uh, a lot of the elements are water soaked. I didn't feel comfortable going in at all. Partial collapse uh, on some of the wooden members and whatnot, shifting of some of the other masonry members and whatnot. I just don't think it was be a good candidate to try to bring, um, you know, a crew into to try to stabilize and salvage as it exists there now. I'd be concerned about some of the work that was done years ago was slanted a little. Some of the members had let go. A lot of the stuff was water soaked. I just, I just looked at it from the perspective of trying to get in there, look at it, and see if someone kind of come in and r repair, restore, bring back, and I. I just wouldn't feel comfortable putting a work crew in there to uh, try to stabilize, salvage, take out, restore. It seems like more of a candidate to take down, rebuild, not in its present state. And it did look like it had been open to the elements for years and years and years. It doesn't look like there was any effort to prevent, you know, the water from continuing to soak those wooden members. But that, that was my my report, my observation, deteriorated elements, continued water soaking. Uh, the condition it was in didn't look to me that I would feel comfortable. It would be a really elaborate process to try to get somebody in there. I, I wouldn't feel comfortable putting anybody in there. You know, it's like a house of cards it, to, to me, my opinion. So I can't speak to the historic aspects of it, but strictly from a, can you go in there and stabilize, secure, salvage this? My opinion, I, I didn't think so, not not without some type of elaborate, disassemble, put it back together kind of situation. Okay. All right. Thanks, Tom. I appreciate it, Mike. Um, any, uh, any thought? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Good evening. Uh, Chris Stampley, Lieutenant with the Fire Department of the Fire Marshal for the town. I was out on the inspection just to reiterate what the chief had said. I mean, in the condition that the building's in, I mean, you know, it has the big red X on it. I think we have three properties, well, four, because there's two on there, that have the red X's on town that are actually forbidden from firefighters going into due to structural integrity or issues with the building. I mean, if anything ever happened to that building, it's it's going to come down, and no guys are going to go in there, nobody's going to go near it. Um, I liken it to the Lincoln Building when we had the snowstorm. I mean, that building, in my opinion, is one good storm away from a st complete structural failure that we've seen before. It's just not a safe structure, and I don't see how it could be safe. There's no way to even get in there safely. So. Okay. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate it. Yeah. Captain Levinson, Hingham Fire Department. I was down at uh, at that site twice. Uh, again, it hasn't didn't change much in between. The barn out back did the first trip in '16. The front wall would flex in and out, and the second trip in '18, the wall's not moving, so it is continuing to sag. Eventually, it will come over. 
Uh, no one mentions the house to the right, the Harriet Rust House. 58 is, if it does lean and go, it is heading in that direction. It's a fairly close proximity. Uh, we don't want it to hit that house. It is, uh, it's been kind of a group home for a long time. Different people have occupied that house. Uh, my concern is, is to general safety. Whether it can be fixed or not at this point doesn't matter for us right now. It is a safety hazard. There's no first floor. Anybody goes in is going into the crawl space or the basement. Uh, they can, kids can get injured. It has never been locked up or secured. Uh, they threw some nails in the front door not that long ago. That's uh, not going to keep anybody out. And that is our concern. If someone does go in there and gets injured, then we have to go in there and get them out. Due, the, uh, due to the red X on the building, if it catches fire, our uh, job is to stand by and protect the exposures. 48 and the Harriet Rust House. Um, well, then we'll start pouring water on 58. Uh, right now, I do I do see it as a hazard, and it uh, needs to come down. Unless appreciate it. Thank you. Susan Sarney, um, Executive Health Officer for the Board of Health. I have written an order July 23rd, 2018 to Mr. Pitts regarding violations of the State Sanitary Code, similar to the Fire Department's a public safety issue in terms of safe conditions of the structural members, the structural integrity of the dwelling, weather tight. There is a boat in the back that's full of water that is a breeding ground for mosquitoes and insects. Um, there's some rubbish, refuge, garbage on the property that should be cleaned up. But for overall, it's public health and public safety to anybody who gets on that property. That's all. Thanks, Susan. Okay, thanks, Mike. Um, any any follow up to that, um, John? Did you wanna do you wanna take the microphone and reply to some of those concerns? And yeah, you know, it's very touching. Everyone, you know, we got a bunch of town guys working for the same taxpayers, and it's probably to their benefit not to rock the boat. In fact, there should be an investigation if they went against the building inspector. Um, as far as me turning down the grants, if you saw the grants, how they were written up, I would have been like a sperm donor. I wouldn't have had anything to do with my own property. I would have had to go before the town to beg them if I wanted to change a piece of wood inside the house, outside the house. I mean, I would have lost control of the house. It was a joke. So I'm not going to sell myself out for five or $6,000. Um, I have a, a guy here who was a building inspector, and I want him to come up, and you can ask him. He's worked on jobs. He's salvaged buildings that were in worse condition than mine. Um, I feel this has turned out to be something that it really didn't have to be. If I was issued the permit two years ago, I wouldn't be here now. And as far as, and my attorney is aware of it too, they keep saying I've got all kinds of notices. First of all, my house is, I have a house in Vermont. I don't know who they're serving the, these papers to. I come down here, I pay my tax bill. I have a P.O. box, everything should be going there. So, as far as I'm concerned, I haven't been notif notified properly. Um, and as far as he brought in some contractor, two years ago he brought in a contractor that says a disinterested person came in to survey it. Well, the, the disinterested person works for, I guess, some contractor in town, Shepherd Construction, who I think you used them, they were representing you. They, I thought they were representing you for going for some funds, maybe not. I thought they were trying to get some addition on your house. But anyways, it doesn't matter. But all I know is his boss, well, I, through a realtor, came to me, offered me a, a real low ball figure on the property. And uh, then his employees come in and say, oh, yeah, we've got to tear it down. In fact, they made it very clear there will be no problem taking the place down. So I mean, they, they're looking for house lots that can build something new. They don't really care about saving a place. But I would like 
um, and he's my consultant on this project, I would like him to come up and reiterate what I'm saying, whether this property can be salvaged or not. And either way, I will build something there again. Um, and Mr. Clancy's gone around, he's told people, it's come to me, that, oh, we're going to fix it up that he can't build on the land. I've heard it from town people, I've heard it from people that work in town hall, and if we do some uh, depositions, people will start talking. So I feel I'm getting railroaded, and the town is getting railroaded. They're listening to a bunch of clowns who really don't have any interest in my property. The town's not too ashamed to accept almost $8,000 a year taxes. Um, then I have to listen to them saying, oh, it was like a, a sad of occurrence that someone, the only one that would take over the house is someone in the property or someone that is related to the owner. Well, guess what? Most houses on Main Street are handed down to family members. They don't want to sell them. So, I mean, it's not such a big sacrifice. And a slow. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Pitts had someone who wanted to have speak. Folks, I'm Mike Simpson. I've done, uh, some of you already know me. Um, I did a project here on uh, 32 Lincoln Street. And uh, I don't know if you remember that project, but uh, it was a historical home. I was the site construction supervisor. And uh, we basically raised it up. And we had two walls remaining. One was facing Lincoln Street, and the other one was facing, I believe, North Street. And I had that up there and probably 15 feet in the air. It was just the facade. Just, it looked like a movie screen from a movie scene. And um, I'm sure I could do something with this building under the direction of a structural engineer. I believe I can take it apart, do whatever needs to be done. And Peter Bickford has offered the same thing. But um, I think it can be partially saved. I don't know if anybody's seen the project that, you know, that I'm talking about, but I was the, um, construction supervisor on 32 Lincoln Street and that uh, I believe was recently uh, given the occupancy I believe was it Michael or not uh, do you recall that one 32 Lincoln Street was the occupancy uh, issued okay Mike can tell you about the project um, all we left was a you know was a, a built in the 1800s and because of the historic they wanted me to leave the front part of it and the side and uh, that was my job, and I got it done, and I'm sure I can do the same thing with this. And we did it all from the air with lifts. Uh, we used 40-foot uh, lifts and cranes, and we took it all apart. So I'm sure it can be, you know, partially saved. Okay? Thank you, Mike. Hold on a second. Um, come on up, <coughs> Jim Watson, to anyone on Rockland Street again. With a lot of discussion about, on one hand, the great value of restored antique house in downtown Hingham. You know, value, look at the prices of current houses, could support a lot of work. Second, a lot of debate about the condition of it, because it looks very discouraging. But I've heard informed local observers commenting that the bones are good, the structure is much better than it looks like. And I'm wondering if Peter Bickford or the man from Axiom or somebody else that's looked at it could uh, elaborate on that. Now, I'm not a builder. I just. Uh, concerned about it. But maybe Peter could tell us more. Hi again. Um, actually, I did go through the house a couple of years ago. I think it was for the HTC when the proposal for the house was going to be an animal shelter. Yes. I believe. Um, Anyway, the first thing I do when I look at a, a structure like that, an old structure, I look at the corner boards, I look at the rake boards, and I look at the ridge. And amazingly, that the, the house on, on uh, 58 Main Street is fairly plumb level and, and straight. Um, so again, that's why I'm here. It, you know, the, 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 member, the, the members in between, uh, the sills are gone, the uh, purlins and and some of the structural members are in between are gone, but can they be restored, replaced? Yeah, if you have the right materials, I have the right materials. So again, I could, uh, if, if, it, if I had the opportunity, I could certainly restore that house in place, or I could certainly dismantle it 
and um, and save it and relocate it someplace else. I'm not advocating one or the other. I'm just telling you what what I could do with it. Okay. Thank you, Peter. I know I've been up here once, so just a final word. Um, in regards to what Peter just said, um, things are possible. Things can be done. Um, and it's been very interesting listening to everybody here. Uh, passion on both sides, a real diversity of opinion. Um, and I really wouldn't say that any side is wrong. Um, I would say this, that the decision that weighs on you does not have to be made tonight. 30 days extension is what Mr. Pitts's attorney is asking for. 30 days for a house that stood there for 262 years. Okay, it can be demolished at any time. That's easy. Once it's torn down, it's never coming back. So you are the historic district? Districts, yeah. District, okay. So this is a opportunity um, to save it one final time. Now if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And it gets torn down. But it can be torn down anytime. It can't be saved anytime. So I found it very interesting hearing both sides. Again, I don't think either side is completely wrong. And that is why, given all the different sides, you should give it 30 days to think about this so maybe cooler heads can prevail and we can come up with a balanced conclusion. Thank you. Thank you. OK. Um, a lot of discussion, good discussion. Thank you all for coming. Um, I think it was very worthwhile to hear everybody. Uh, from from both sides, um, and uh, with that, maybe we can open it up for additional questions and comments. Um, what I will say is that you know this commission is all about preservation. The last thing we want to do is lose a house in the historic districts. Um, we're here to protect, preserve, see that the homeowner um, takes good care of these homes, give them the ability to. Um, to proceed and, and to, to restore if they need be, but uh, to just keep them up. Uh, I think that um, you know this commission took a very hard look back in uh, 2016 at, um, at all of these issues. And uh, Mr. Pitts was in front of us actually to, he wanted to demolish the house. And we talked him out of it. Uh, so we, we wanted to see him restore it as kind of an 11th hour, call it, 11th hour and 59 minutes to to uh, to restore the house, and you know we've waited and we've waited, and other commissions have waited and waited, and so from 1989 on we've been we've been waiting, and I just um, I'm I'm personally I'm I'm hearing you know what Mr. Pitts is saying I'm I'm hearing about the 30 days I'm <coughs> hearing that you wanna you wanna do something and restore it but. I feel that um, I feel that it's um, we're kind of at a crossroads here, and we need to do something um, because uh, I just personally I'm kind of I'm not in the I'm not in the believing camp anymore. So uh, we all want to see it restored. We all want to see something done here, but um, I'm hoping that that will still be the outcome, whatever this commission decides tonight. So um, any uh, any questions, comments? Um, for, for anyone? You know, I think it's it's clear that, you know, what you've stated in, in being the preserver of this properties, and I think there's been a lot of debate about the condition of the house. Can it be repaired? Can it not be repaired? Can it be dismantled and reconstructed? Clearly, it's in disrepair, uh, and something needs to happen because it's unsafe. Um, and this has been going on for 30 some odd years, and for nothing to happen, um, you know, is the real challenge here because clearly something um, needs to, and I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure why it hasn't. Just to follow up on what Mike's saying, um, my my biggest concern here tonight is is safety. Um, given that we've got a structural engineering report, we've got a fire report, we've got a police report, we've got a building report, and they're all citing safety. And you know, if something if something were to happen. Um, at that site right now, we give it more time. We give it more time. Um, 
I feel like uh, I think I feel like it's on us, um, and that and that does that does bother me. That concerns me. So. Um, Go ahead. Um, you know, I'm afraid I can't be anything but philosophical um, in that I see this as a tale of travesty and tragedy, potential tragedy. Um, I think to let a property go to the extent of such colossal safety concerns, which I absolutely respect the safety concerns for the citizens of Hingham. Um, and to let a property go for a number of years with a number of possibilities for remediation is, to my mind, um, a travesty. Um, th the um, tragedy uh, is that there has not there has been a lack of approach to remediation despite the possibility as han said six six possibilities with public funds you know the cpc offered some funds greenbush offered funds i don't having been involved in the development of the greenbush trust i don't believe it's as onerous as represented frankly, um, so that um, I'm concerned um, by the lack of approach to remediation. However, I'm heartened by the possibilities for remediation to save a historic structure. But you know, I think this is an exemplar of um, you know, in the beginning, historic districts commissions came into effect because people were concerned about homeowners taking care of properties. You know, the, the model was obviously um, uh, Charleston. Um, and that's where the federal programs got involved. Um, and, but you know, this example is that these programs, the historic districts commissions, are only as good as owners respect for compliance and participation. And um, that's kind of um, chastening to me. You know, I do not um, want to see um, a property demolished. I respect Peter's view that it may not need to be demolished, that it could be saved. But, you know, it requires Mr. Pitts's cooperation, and that hasn't been the case over a number of years, and that frankly concerns me. Um. Thank you. Justin or Honey? Um, I'm, I'm reading the uh, Mr. McKinnon's report, um, the engineering report, uh, originally done December 2016 and then updated August 2018. And I'm not persuaded um, by the couple of sentences uh, that's in that report that it really is a comprehensive assessment of the nature of that building and what the risks that it presents are and how they could be ameliorated. Um, I'm also uh, underwhelmed by Mr. Pitts's plan for how to take this forward. I would think after the length of time that's gone on, the six certificates of uh, appropriateness that have been given by this commission and the litigation commencement that has happened by the town, that coming in tonight, we would be looking at a solid plan. And we'd be looking at um, a determination of what's going to happen, <coughs> what the funding is going to be, and where we're going to move forward. We see sophisticated plans with passion uh, from many homeowners in town that far less significant that what the, the uh, work that's being done to the house as this. Um, it, it just seems like it's buying more time and I, I don't really understand uh, the attachment to the property at this point because 
I, I, I don't I don't understand what you want to do with the property um, and I think that I feel as much as we're for preservation and that's what this board is about um, we also have to think about the town of Hingham and I'm here at representing the town of Hingham as well and I think the safety risk that it presents is overwhelming um, and I would expect and did expect that someone would come in tonight not with a letter asking for 30 additional days from a non representing attorney or attorney who's not here to represent himself um, but actually a plan a comprehensive plan the things that have been thrown out tonight could be this could be done this might be done well where is the plan and how this could actually work out where's the timeline where's the respect for the town the respect for the property um, you know we're, we're told that this is a property that we need to be attentive to and we should have been and you should have been as well and I feel bad that this property is in the circumstance it is but I'm not persuaded that the homeowner is serious about going forward at this point and I would wholeheartedly agree with uh, both Virginia and Veronica I won't take the meetings time to uh, reiterate what they've said but I entirely concur with those statements um, I, I agree with most of the comments <coughs> from the Commission as well um, I did have one kind of I was a little curious about one thing it says that it, it, this received eight building permits from this uh, letter from Mr. Clancy um, and it sounds like Mr. Pitt said he was denied a building permit at some point so I'm just a little curious what, what happened with that exchange the eight permits were issued well, well before I came to town, I've been here about almost six years. Okay. Those were issued way back. Way back. So where did the... To where? work on the home and to work on the accessory building out back. Mike, can you... Mike, um, I'm sorry. Can you... Um, <coughs> folks at home will be able to hear you. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Uh, the eight permits that were issued um, uh, date back many many years um, the original barn that was out back was torn down mr. Pitts got a permit to rebuild that um, and today it stands the way it is in disrepair he did get three per uh, no up to five permits on the home to redo the roof shingles redo the siding replace some windows repair the L to the left hand side of the home repair the interior on five separate permits <coughs> excuse me um, permits when you grant them you have to start within the first six months if you don't it becomes nil and void the permit however if somebody gets a permit a homeowner and they're working on the structure once a week for, for years the permit still keeps going on it continues and continues however if you stop for a, for more than six months the permit becomes nil and void and all of the permits have been nil and void since so they weren't denied they were just expired basically they were okay they were expired wait so you've never denied him Trish, a permit? Trish, hold oh, on. Sorry. Hold on. Do you have any other questions? No, that was the only thing I questioned about. Okay. I Trish, before, before we, um, I'll give you another chance, but hold on. Um, ben, did you want to? Um, I, don't, I don't have a doubt that Mike Simpson or Peter Bickford could bring this house back. Not one doubt. I'm sure they could do it. They're both very capable. Uh, however, my problem is the current ownership is not interested, and they have shown that. And here we are, and now it's a safety concern. And we're really left with very little choice. There's no plan. I agree with my, my board members here. They've all touched on it. And it's unfortunate because I don't think there's anyone here that wants to see this thing torn down. I don't think there's anyone in Hingham that wants to see this torn down. But it, it's too bad because there is no plan. And in 2016, we did meet with Mr. Pitts. And we gave him that opportunity. And, now you're, and here we are, 30-some years now. This is someone that doesn't, is not a good steward of the property. Thanks. I'd just like to, to point out that irrespective of how this um, commission votes tonight on this, 
um, there is still the possibility to to save this house. Um, it'll be it would require if the commission votes to demolish on this. It would require working with the town um, and the owner and uh, a contractor, a builder, a restoration person to do it. Um, there's also the possibility that this house could get sold. We have no control over that as a commission. Um, that is up to the current owner. So the house could get sold. Third, third option is the house could get demolished as the proposal here is. So I think there is still some optionality to this, to this, um, to this house. And I think we're all, we would all like to see this saved and preserved as we voted back in 2016. And how, it has, and how other commissions have <coughs> voted for and given certificates of, of, of appropriateness and approvals to do work over the years. So that has not changed. And I think as a commission, we still have hope. But at this time, I think what I'm hearing is the safety piece of it, based on all these reports, and just the lack of a plan here is just is, is swaying us in the other direction. And it's really, really unfortunate. Um, Trish, did you want to, or John, did you want to say something else? I, I just wanted to ask, I mean, you asked a really good question on the permits where it came up with these random facts, but they don't have dates on them. And so when was exactly the last permit issued to Mr. Pitts? What, what, do you know what the date was? So it was before your time, though? Okay, so I just want clear, it's not like he's had all of these permits over the last, and again, the last time you guys granted him to do work, he wasn't issued a permit, clearly, because it hasn't been in Mr. Clancy's time. So it kind of tells you a little bit of the politics. So my concern when our select person was here and said, you know, that townspeople, like, why aren't our government, why isn't our local government working for us? And, and I'm on cultural committee, I'm on a few committees myself. You know, I have to say, it seems like the politics of what's in play here, and I know it's not the best stewardship I get it because my only interest is in historically preserving yep. this home so Trish, just uh, so, just so you know and I, I'm sorry to interrupt yeah. but we have we have applications on file here from 2012 and 2016 for mr. Pitts to demolish this house right. to take it down I understand. Um, so the preservation was not a, a component of this uh, in 2007 was the last certificate that was granted by this commission to do work on that on the house and it was not done that so that was all pre me so I kind of came yeah. into the picture 2013 but I haven't seen or spoken to Mr. Piss in six months I found out about this through somebody else actually from from Facebook of course um, that this was going on about a week ago so I have had no time to prepare anything as, as the president of the ACS but that's why I, I came up asking for time because okay. I think a compromise can be made that at least if we do a 30-day contingency that says you have to then come back with a solid plan and with action and an approved permit to do so so that we can oversee that the permits are being given and that's not why it looks like a neglect of ownership but that everything actually is in place okay and then to make a determination that would totally satisfy me but i know i'm asking for a lot okay. from everybody so just for thank the record you. thank you well, let me ask um uh, John Coughlin, uh, Town Council, um, what the what your view or the town's view might be on a 30-day extension here, given the timetable and given what we know now and what you've heard. Yes, so I think as I stated earlier, this board tonight is being asked to authorize the building inspector to go ahead and demolish under the statute. He's not required to demolish. He's free to work with anybody who has a plan. He can agree uh, to hold off for 30 days, 60 days. In his discretion, they can come forward with a plan, a building permit. They can work with him. Mike's a reasonable guy, and I'm sure if there's a legitimate plan in place, they can implement that. This is not a requirement to demolish. It's authorization to demolish. Okay. All right. I hope that answers a lot of questions here. Okay. All right. Any, any follow-up? I just want to add one more thing. I was really persuaded by, I think it was the captain's um, comment about the uh, potential threat to the house next door, uh, that it was leaning to the right, I think. Um, that was really persuasive to me, in addition to being an attractive nuisance for children and the fire hazard. Um, that, that is of real concern to that 
to the people living there and they have no ability to be able to rectify that situation so uh, that's one of the compelling pieces from my opinion thank you um, any other mr. Pitts do you want to you follow up with any of that yeah as far as the house leaning that house always had a lean to it when I bought it the front you know they make it sound like you know it's um, been left open work went into that house that house was brought down to a skeleton roof came off we resheathed it we put new windows in um, we had a wood roof installed um, shingled roof uh, the floor was left torn up because there's a crawl space there we lowered the crawl space and we we're going to do the front sill the front sill and the foundation on the front that was the last part so that's why the floor is torn up on the first floor it's a construction site it's not a livable house right now um, as far as you you were mentioning um, Ms. Faye or Tay, that you can't understand it well I tried to explain it to you if you read the agreement I would have lost the rights to my property over a five thousand dollar check from the Greenbush or I don't know if maybe that was tailor fitted for me other people were You have something to say? Yeah. No. Not yet. Okay. But all I know is I would have lost ownership basically. I would have all I would have been good for is writing out a check, paying the taxes, and I couldn't have taken any wood out of it. I couldn't have done any alterations. I couldn't have changed it. Um, it was a losing proposition. And it stayed with the house forever. It wasn't a twenty year or a ten year deal. It was forever. So it was a losing proposition. I had attorneys look at it and they said, What are you crazy? So there was no way I was going to touch that. Um, and you know, again, we wouldn't be here if I had been issued that permit to do the work two years ago. I was denied, and again, I wouldn't be here right now. We we're going to make repairs. We we're going to get the place safe, and the bond was going to, we we're going to take a permit out to take the bond down, and a new bond is going to be constructed. And um, I feel that uh, either way, whether it comes down or if it stays. Developers, contractors love to do new construction. It's more work to do old work, uh, restoration work. You know, this board, I know it's changed over the years, but when I first bought the place, I bought it roughly in 1980. I could have put on vinyl siding, like the house next to me, that's tin siding. I could have put ants and crank out windows. I could have defaced the property. I listen to people like Peter Bickford. I listen to people that know his history and historic homes. And I could have way back then defaced it, as I said. I could have done everything wrong. And then you'd be looking at it. I was doing everything right. And you know what? We brought it down. You could stand in the backyard and you could see the bank. You could, the place is wide open. So every bit of sheathing. And as far as the house falling down, it's not going anywhere. When that house, when we tore off the clapboards, the clapboards were nailed right to the studs. There was no sheathing. We put sheathing on. So for that house to fall down, in fact, I went up Main Street today and I took a picture and I'll be glad to show you. It's right in the 700 area. And that house is postcards with it. And that house has a serious lien. Uh, that house is going nowhere. I put foundations under it. The only part that the foundation didn't get finished was the front. And that's why it was torn up from the inside so we could do that. And um, as far as uh, one time I came in here, it had to be either May or June, and I, they said, don't do any more work. And I believe it was 1987, the Historic District Commission or Historic Society, they came in to Hingham Square. And they came in like gangbusters. I got a letter saying, don't do any work, don't do anything, come before us. And it was a night out for everyone to just kind of bust, bust my chops. And what I did is I stopped, and that's it. You know, they discouraged me from working on it. Then when you don't work on it, you're the evil person. But like I said, they're not too bashful asking for almost 8000 a year, and, but they won't let you use the dump to take the tree trimmings or something. I mean, what's that all about? Okay, thank you. Any other follow-up? I'd like to respond to the not being denied a building permit. Okay. Under the building code 780 CMR, if I deny a building permit, it has to be in writing. And the person that I deny has a 45-day appeal period with the Board of Building Regulations and Standards. 
I have never denied a permit to Mr. Pitts. Thank you. What do you ask Andrew if as far as denied? John, you want to come up to the mic? This is, um, it's a building permit. It's not a... Uh, well, first of all, you have to have a uh, certificate of appropriateness or whatever it's called from here before you can get a building permit. Andrew is gung-ho. She wanted me to get working on it. I walked across the hall. Actually, Mr. Clancy didn't say I couldn't get a permit. It was one of his workers, some woman in the office. And then when I talked to him, and most farms, other towns, they have a place right on it. A lot of times they have it. If you're owner-occupied, it's going to be owner-occupied. If, it, if it's going to be your future residence, you're exempt. You can do it. Uh, naturally, it has to be inspected. It has to conform to the code. Right. And uh, I do things right. I have licenses and other trades, and, and all my <laughs> licenses, you had to take exams. They weren't an open book exam. They were ones that I, I did things, and everything is inspected. I know the procedure. Yep. And everything would have been done right. For you to do um, maintenance work on that house and you know, without major modifications, it would have just been a certificate of non-applicability and you could have started the work and you wouldn't have to come into the commission for a hearing or anything and then you just get involved with the building department on the on the. I believe that's what I had. I so, that's what I, so that's what we were looking back in 2016. Well, I did receive it. I have okay. the approval letter from okay. here. I walked across the hall the same day Andrea walked across with me and I was denied and you know what then I get another letter saying when I said okay I talked to someone from the state he says you can get your permit um, I talked to other inspectors from towns in the North Shore the Birches and they said it's very common people if they're living in the house they can do it maybe if it's a three family or something you can't I don't know what the laws are then you might need a uh, supervisor's license a construction supervisors but all I want to do is get the house safe and then we were going to go onto the bond and take that down. Okay. Whatever the commission decides tonight, it's our hope that you will, you know, get a restoration specialist, get a builder, get a contractor, get an engineer, whatever you do need, work with the building department and restore the home. But that's up to you. Yeah. That's up to you. Well, sure. all we're asking is if we have 30 days, we can put something in motion. We can, um, you know, try to get... Uh, the right people on board and and go forward. I I have a question, Mr. Pitts. Sure. What would make this 30 days going forward different than past attempts? Well, guess what? Maybe the fact that I have the whole town here saying they're going to tear it down. Like I said, I could kill us if we come down. I'll build something new, and guess what? It'll be an easier sell. A lot of people don't like old houses. It's a certain breed that like old houses. So either way, it's not going to hurt my feelings. But everyone in town, when I was, I was asked not to withdraw the application um, and go for the CPA funds. Then after we spent all kinds of time and effort trying to get it, come on with $5,000. I mean, I could have probably got a paper route and made more money than that, <laughs> what they were going to give me. But it's a case where it was a joke. It was a joke, and they would have owned my property. But the bottom line is we want 30 days and you'll see some action, and if not, then we can tear it down. And I have the right people that are willing to do that. Uh, Mr. Chairman, yeah. I just want to respond to Mr. Pitt's earlier point about uh, when we walked over from my office to the yeah. building department. I, it's my understanding that there was a, a misunderstanding about whether or not you were going to live there, and I think that was... Um, well, I would think that the building department would have had an obligation to ask that person that. And on the permit, I think it should have said, if it's owner occupied, a lot of the permits, owner occupied, you're exempt, or if it's going to be an intended residence, you're exempt. And by the way, I, I started the story when years ago, when the Historic District Commission came in, I believe it was like 1987, they come forward, they say, don't do any work on it. Then it must have been like May or June, and I come in, we wanted to work all summer. And uh, they said, oh, we won't convene until September, so just sit on your property and don't do anything because it's against the law for you to drive a nail into that place. You come under our regulations now. So it was, it was an ego trip for everyone. Um, but anyways, there is a different board here. I also have a letter that stated 
when we were working on the end of the addition on the left hand side which was a replacement of the addition and I have pictures of it as well as the barn it was getting cold out it was heavy rains scheduled and I still have the letter from the historic commission stating I asked I said we got to cover it up it's going to be cold I have a letter stating don't do it no tops allowed and I still have that so then beans got wet it was kind of discouraging I had hand hewn beans made um, in that brick section of the house a lot of strange things have gone on and you might be hearing this for the first time but all I know is my effort was to restore the place do it right and I listened to the right people I feel and we were going gung-ho we we're doing the best we could it wasn't like I had federal money It wasn't like I was restoring the Adams house where they send 25 people down there and they work uh, 24 hours a day um, this was my funds my my loans my uh, resources that were making it happen and uh, and like I said the town still was getting their tax dollars for it and um, and I feel that I wouldn't be here if I had gotten that permit two years ago the place would have been weather tight the bond probably would have been replaced and you know what most important of all I've never been served properly I never received I'm hearing about all these letters and everything Half of the stuff I find out by reading it in the newspaper where someone calls me. Okay, thank you. L let me ask the um, commission first. Do we want to entertain the 30-day um, the request? Um, do you want to discuss it? Do you want to, you know, how does, the, how does the commission feel about it at this point? As the town council has pointed out, um, granting the so what we're, what we're tasked to do here tonight is grant authorization. That doesn't mean uh, Mr. Clancy is going to tear the building down. We're only granting authorization for the next step. So in my opinion, Mr. Pitts automatically has some time to get whatever he needs to get together and, and meet, meet with Mr. Clancy with the proper paperwork and take the next steps if Mr. Pitts is truly interested as the owner of this property. Anybody else? I feel the same way. You might feel differently? I agree. Yeah. As, as long as it's spelled out very clearly what we believe as 30 days. Uh, no? Oh, I'm just saying, I think Ben was saying I'm, On the contrary, he, I'm not granting 30 he days. He does not we're, want the 30 we're just, days. We're just, here, we're just here to determine whether or not Yeah. Uh, we're granting authorization for the town right. of Hingham. So, I mean, would you like to see, would anybody like to see a 30-day? Uh, I would like to see a 30-day um, address of this issue. I mean, I would be, I think, in favor of um, voting affirmatively for the authorization of a teardown, but I'd like to see 30 days. Um, to be held in abeyance for 30 days? Yeah. Ronnie? I could live with that. I, I think we should take the vote, though. Well, and then if I could sort of add something to that mix, too, is it, it demolition or dismantling uh, and removing the property. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a difference of demolition and tearing it down and throwing it in a dumpster versus dismantling it and trying to save the property. Um, my view on this, uh, on the 30 days, is that, um, you know, unfortunately, um, this has been going on for quite some time, and we receive a 30-day letter uh, tonight um, in front of us um, asking for a 30-day stay. And um, I'm just concerned that this is just repetition and more of the same. So I don't know if 30 days um, does anything here except put the town in a little bit more of a precarious position, a challenging position, and then needing to come back again with the arguments. So I don't, I don't see how anything Personally, I don't see how anything changes in 30 days um, because we don't have a plan tonight. We didn't have a plan in 2016. There was no plan in 2000 and, you know, 2006. There was no plan in 2003, um, 89 to 99. There just wasn't anything there of any substance. So I think this is just more of the same. Mr. Chairman, I, I believe we need to vote on the application as presented. Right, right. And there is no 30-day contingency there. I think right. Mr. Coughlin explained that very well, that it, it rests with uh, Mr. Clancy. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I think if you, um, 
if you are in favor of 30 days and you need more information, you don't have enough here, then you can vote, you know, you can vote no. Um, if you believe that there's enough information here, um, you agree with the town's position, um, you could vote yes to demolish tonight. So I think that would be the vote then. Anybody have any objection to that? Hold on a second. Does anybody have any objection to that? No. Here, here's, here's how I see it. Mr. Clancy is not going to tear the building down tomorrow. That gives Mr. Pitts an opportunity to talk to Mr. Clancy about his, <clears throat> his plan going forward. Uh, we heard from Mr. Bickford. We, we, we've heard from Mike Simpson. There are others that are interested. The building's not getting torn down tomorrow. There's time, but this board can't grant the 30 days. It's not our purview. And it's not the application before us. And it's not us. the application before us. Yeah, agreed. Okay. Um, Trish, you have one last... Uh, I'm just asking, um, sorry, Mr. Collard made a point about demolish versus dismantle. And I know the petition says to demolish, which is throwing everything in a dumpster, mm -hmm. as opposed to dismantle, which the Historic District Commission, in preservation, in sight of preservation, could it be amended to say to dismantle as opposed to demolish where they can just tear it down and not preserve anything? Um, I, I believe that that can be worked out with, um, with the, the building commissioner's office, um, those specific items, if it comes to that. So well, I, as a citizen, I would ask that you protect that and, and strike demolish and add um, dismantle in order to preserve any historic part that's left that can be salvaged of that property, that's all. Um, John, do you have any, do you want to, any comments on, on that phrasing or change in phrasing? My only thought on that is it, it gives the building commission the authority to demolish the building. How he carries out that work, he hasn't gone out to get quotes, bids, we don't know how much this is going to cost the town, we don't know how much it's going to be to demolish versus dismantle, so I think to tie his hand at this point, um, the application before you is to allow him to demolish. He can do that in any manner that he deems appropriate. We can work with people in town if there are things that can be salvaged depending on the cost of the town. Remember, the town is paying this. This is not the homeowner paying for this. Um, the town has to put a lien on the property to try to recover afterwards. So um, I think the appropriate uh, way to do it would be to approve the application as is and then let the building inspector decide uh, the appropriate way to bring the structure down, either pulling pieces out or, or demolish it. Okay. Any questions or comments about that? Yeah, I'm not sure we have the authority. I'm just looking at our own. Yeah. I'm not sure we have the authority to add that. Right. <coughs> okay. Would somebody like to make a motion uh, for the town's application uh, to demolish uh, the building's structures on the premises of 58 Main Street in the Lincoln Local Historic District? I can do that. Is it still a certificate of appropriateness? Yes. It is. Okay. To the town. I'd like to make a, a motion for a certificate of appropriateness for the town of Hingham to granting the town of Hingham authorization to demolish two buildings at 58 Main Street in the Lincoln Local Historic District. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you all for coming in. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Okay, moving right along. Um, totally. <laughs> Hello, Margaret. Hi. Hi, Monica. Hi. Okay, good evening. Thank you for waiting. Thanks for coming in again, Margaret. Appreciate it. Interesting. <laughs> you okay? Yes. All right, good. Uh, um, so uh, Virginia is just bringing up that um, she was not here last meeting. Um, so 
Did, have, um, uh, Justin. Okay, Justin. Right. Okay. Say again. So, okay. were you here last meeting? For, I was here last okay. meeting. Okay. All right. Could you be the fifth voting member on this? Okay. Thank you. And we've got Ben. Right. The and Ben's there. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, um, so thanks for coming in again. We got the uh, we got the updated drawings. We had a couple questions and related to the uh, the addition um, towards the rear. Um, do you want to walk us through some of the changes that? Uh, that um, you're I was not here at the last meeting either. Sorry, but. Um, Margaret filled me in and said that basically you guys would like us to drop the rear roof from the main roof of the house, which is seen on the side elevation of the, of the paper that we gave you. And I guess you probably discussed in the last meeting that we decided not to do the bigger portion over this extension. And so this gives her enough of what she needs. And well, we're not losing the roof line. Okay. Yeah. Right. And their ceiling height. Right. Without using without doing the ceiling height and so that's what we did. Were you able to maintain the ceiling height in the in the addition? It's or? go ahead. You speak. That the ceiling height problem was was in the last plan when the roof line came down, so it's not this one is all this is all worked out. So this last time came the two meetings ago when we left and it was talked about to put on the farmer's porch on the side. Yep. That's what this came from that exercise came this. I understand. Uh, lower a wonderful positive difference. I'm sorry. Yeah, just yeah, just lowering the ridge height by six inches. I was just wondering if you had if you lost any ceiling height into on the interior of the second floor by doing that. I don't know that we did or didn't, but I know that it's adequate. Looks, we'll okay. It's all right. Yeah. We'll make it I work. mean we'll we'll figure okay. if it works for you then it will okay. work for us. I'm sorry, just go ahead. I, I, really, that's all I wanted to say. I think it really adds a lot um, to the design. So. Mike, Ben? Um, I, I don't have any questions. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> I think it was, a, it was a positive change. Yeah, it makes a big difference. Big difference. It took a lot of time, but I actually think that the end design, even on the interior, is more in liking. She likes it better now. It gives her some of the things that she wanted that maybe we didn't know you wanted in the beginning. It keeps it a little bit more unique. Yes. It's a little quirkier on the inside than it was, <laughs> which I like. So. I know it took a bunch of meetings. But I think you got to an end point that's um, that's a lot better than where where you initially started. So I um, I know the process was uh, was a little bit difficult, but I hope um, I hope at the end it's um, you've got a uh, you got a house that you can work with and live in that you really like. Um, from our standpoint, by breaking the um, breaking the ridge line down and being able to show that that was an addition that was put on recently, and you're able to maintain the. To, the, the, the historic home, I think, um, adds a lot of value. And that's something that we were looking for. So thank you for doing that. So uh, just a couple of questions in terms of the package of information here. So I know it seems like the change from the last meeting to this meeting was dropping that roof mm -hmm. line. Mm -hmm. So there were no plan changes, because mm -hmm. I know there were no plans submitted with right. today's version. Right. So is it safe to say that the plans that were submitted in the last round yep. are the same? So if we get to a vote on this referencing plans and elevations, mm -hmm. even though they're both dated June 27th, we'll have to figure out a way to sort of identify that a little differently in terms of the elevations, that this floor plan that was submitted last time matches the floor plan that uh, matches the elevations that were submitted today. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have a received date of July the 30th on uh, for the for elevations this, this, today? This one that we're reviewing today. I got a plan date of June June 27th. Uh, and that was exactly what the other one was. Right. So, so that's what Mike is saying. 
the 27th. This is incorrect. This <coughs> one's correct. But if we can, we can state that the received date is 7:30. And there's a there's a drop on the ridge of four inches. Yeah. Right. Monica, does anything else change other than just the the ridge? No. Did you have to drop everything else down to keep nope. the uh, the pitches? No, but all worked. Okay. Assuming this would drop down a little bit, right? <laughs> this would have to. Be. Yeah, which it looks like it. I mean, yeah, I don't know if it's picked up any of these other other drawings, but how are you? That's a good question. How are you resolving? The pitches have to be the same, right? Right. The header height? Right. It's just up in the trim. It's part of the freeze. Uh, I see. Although this looks like it's in the... Well, no, maybe that is lower than the other side. Yeah, it is lower. You just dropped everything. Yeah, we really just dropped. You're, you're talking about the soffit detail. Yeah. Specific. Yeah. It will be lower. In terms of materials like windows and trim, and can you talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah, we um, we were going to keep all the windows that were in the front of the house because the pro original proposal was to change the windows, and that's when we originally got this window up in the peak to be meet egress. So these were going to be wood windows. Um, the clapboard would be matching the clapboard. It would all be clapboard. The trim detail would remain the same. Um, I brought in that picture of that gable detail that was on the addition that Sally did that was a little bit plainer than the detail in the front and you guys thought that that was good so we would just keep the trim the same the windows would be uh, if you if they're not visible from the street I believe she could use the Marvin um, small mutton true divided light shall I call them modern windows <laughs> as opposed to the ones in the front of the house that would have to be wooden with the storms. Simulated divided light. Simulated divided light. So the part of the house that I would claim would be visible from the street would be the front of the house, the side of the house that is um, on the proposed left elevation. Mm -hmm. The area where the farmer's porch is with those two windows, remember that is in from the main house. That area, this area right here, is not visible from the street. It's set in from the main house. And we've had multiple discussions about what is visible and what is not visible on the um, right elevation. <coughs> and um, with the big rock there, I think that what is would be considered visible from the, from the street would be the main house. I don't know if in her plans with the windows, she may decide to change that octagon that is visible from the street on the right side, which is probably done in a previous. Um, well, you know, anything that's new construction, Monica, you know that you can use a simulated divided light right. wood, wood windows on. Right. It doesn't matter if you can see it or, or not from the street. Okay, if so you can, if you can, so you could do new construction additions, simulated divided light. We've approved. Okay, so basically, that is occurring in the the drop on. Yes, the drop on, which is basically the same thing I'm set. I'm making an argument for, but I guess it's just going to be okay. And did I understand that all the, the windows in the front, you are not going to be changing the the gable window. This one. This one, just the one in the top. That is the one you are. Mm -hmm. You are changing that one yeah. still. And y yes, and and you guys had approved that. I yes. think. Yes. Yeah. For fire. For fire. 
And she's changing the front door. She's got approval for that. But, um, we'll restore or restoring, restoring it. The shutters come off. So the shutters come off, and it's, you know, the two tall arched windows that are behind the shutters. Uh, what, Monica, what were you saying about the octagon on the north elevation? I'm just saying or that. Right elevation? I'm just saying that. It kind of sticks out to me of something that was maybe done in the 70s. And if we're going through all of this with some of the internal changes that are going on up there, she may decide that she wants to change it to a more historically accurate okay, so the option. I'll leave it up to her. Although we would have to. I'll bring it to you. We'd if we, to I'll bring it to you. I'll bring it to yeah. you. Yeah. We'd have to grant an option. That's fine. OK. Ben? No, no further questions. Okay, Mike, you got you comfortable at this point? Or? Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna spell out the windows and yeah. So the new this is gonna be an est. Let's let's just go through the plan real quick, Monica, with the other uh, windows. Um, um, so everything on the um, Everything on the addition to the left of the gable, yes, as you're looking at it, um, are going to be what windows? Marvin. Okay, Marvin. Simulated. Uh, simulated divided light. SDL wood. Okay, so those one, two, three, four, mm -hmm. right, and the door. Mm -hmm. Wood door. Looks like you got a. It's just a uh, two um, two pieces of glass there. Or? On this door. Yeah. Yes. Okay, that's new. And then replacing all the uh, the sliders on, on the left mm -hmm. with the uh, connector, mm -hmm. um, all wood there, right? Mm -hmm. um, you gonna go? You gonna go? Simulated divided light there? You gonna, yes. Okay, so all SDLs there. You got a wood door on the on the middle, right? Right. Okay. But that's there. That's existing. Existing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so no change there. So it's gonna be one, two, three, four windows on the connector. They're gonna be new, right? Yes. Okay. Got those. Mm -hmm. Um, and then on the uh, the right, uh, excuse me, the right side as you're looking at the uh, at the house. Um, on the other side are all going to be um, in the connector. Are all going to be wood. Simulated device. Those are all going to be new, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Door will be wood there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we can't. There's a cutoff here on the. Um, we can't really see the because we we're not. That's all existing. It's all existing. That's that long part. That and even the door yeah. and that window there. So no windows are going to change on that side. Um, just to the right here, no windows are going to. You know what I mean? Oh, on the front. I'm talking about the front. Oh, I the thought front. you were talking about the right elevation. Um, he was, but he moved to the front. You moved to the front. Oh, okay, it's it's a reverse. I'm sorry. So nothing changes. Um, Nothing changes on that side except for the connector, correct? Right. And these these two windows here. Those yes. two windows here are new. those are new? Huh? Okay, those are gonna be wood. Yep. Okay. And then this one here? New. New. Okay. And is there anything coming out of that 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 you can salvage? Any of those windows coming out of there? No, they're all, that's part of the whole area where the um, sliders are. This is the. Okay. No. All right. So it's all, it's all new and it's all SDL. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. You're going to do the roof to match, correct? Mm -hmm. It's going to be asphalt, right? 
And the trim is going to be to match, right? All yes. the trim work. Paint. To match. Paint to match. Okay. <coughs> Forget anything else? Any lights here? Any um? <laughs> any lanterns or anything you're going to put in? I'll bring you the cut sheets. Okay. All right. Good. I think so. Any more questions, Matt? Yeah. Are there are there any opinions on the trim detail around these windows on the addition? Um. It's a, it's a sill on those Marvins. It's um, it's a, you know, that's a an antique sill, right? That comes. You can get a historic sill, yes. So to match, to match the front. Well, I think a historic sill is appropriate. I don't know if the detail in the header is appropriate uh, on the addition. Typ typically, in additions, we look for a progression. Right. We don't necessarily want it to match exactly. I don't know how the board feels about that. I think that strongly. It could be that maybe these match this, but then that these are simplified. The right. Connector. Right. Because the back already has been simplified uh -huh. with the addition that was approved previously. Yeah. Remember, I brought in those pictures of that detail there. These are the pictures. So the detail in the front of the house with the little. Yeah. You know, I, I think that that is appropriate for anything that seems to be in the front of the house. Um, the transition from the front of the house to the back, you know, maybe because this is going to be such a prominent back door in the porch, maybe this area, even though the roof drops, seems like it's more the front of the house. When you get past the door on the left elevation, you start, when you get to the door and you start moving towards the garage, the detail was already picked by a previous. Re uh, renovation and it's a lot simpler. And it's your intent to follow yes, okay. to just become more simpler as you go back. Okay. So she's got all these matching in the drawings. And these are all kind of the same too. Right. That you can maybe you can, we were, you can call that out that maybe they're a little bit different. These are maybe these match this part, but yep. these match that part. Right. Maybe you can oh, that. Sorry. No, no, that's okay. See when it goes back. See how simple the trim becomes in the back, mm -hmm. and then so the area we're actually changing is from here to there. So I think that if I where it breaks and it goes back, if I become more simple, it sort of transitions from the fancier to the main house, the back house that mm -hmm. already has all that trim because it's it's kind of a fair you know, there's a yeah. lot of that. Yeah, yeah. And even the gables are plain. Yeah, these are wide mold. A wide mold. Which I'm, I really do. I don't know if they were available then. You know how they need the more than thinner. Yeah. Ben, is there a way to call out um, a window size um, sill or configuration that um, you know we could we could do that for them? Yeah, I think we can do that. Um, that's a little bit different than the um, large addition, you know, in the connector. Sure. How would you How would you do that? How well, we'd have to talk about specify. Um, on the proposed left elevation. We talk yep. about the first floor. Yep. Um, and those windows. So it could certainly be a historic still, but we're not going to do the detail in the in the uh, that you see in the header. Instead, it would be the flat stock that's already existing. On the, what, what, it's before the garage. What is the? It's a family room. The family and, a, a, and okay. another bedroom and office. Okay, so we could just call it kind of a flat stock configuration um, to match the the garage. Mm -hmm. um, the family room. Family room. Yeah. Okay. And we could do that on on the left and the right side, correct? Well, on the right side. On the connector. Yes. Yep. Okay, and then go with a, a little bit of a larger configuration, historic sill, for these two windows here. Yes. Okay. All right. Oh, 
we missing anything else? You guys, anything else? Okay. Um, Mike, you want to? Mike sure. or Brian, you want to go with the? You guys can rock, paper, scissors, Mike. <laughs> okay. <laughs> In my teeth tonight. Yeah, you have. Um, all right, so I'd like to make a motion to issue a certificate of appropriateness to 191 North Street um, for additions and modifications um, based on floor plans dated June 27th. 2018 and revised elevations received on July 30th 2018 um, windows in the new addition to be uh, simulated divided light wood windows uh, Montan's Montan dimensions to match existing um, trim details uh, to match existing in regard to window trim details on the immediate rear addition two-story addition uh, trim details to match existing main house on the one-story um, existing lower addition uh, window trim details are to be simplified but with a historic sill. Those details are to match uh, the rear, the far rear family room addition. Um, on the right side of the house, similarly, um, the windows being replaced on the low one story addition to be simulated divided light uh, with trim to match. Uh, the simplified version, uh, two new windows on the right side elevation of the two-story addition, trim details to match the main house. Um, all exterior materials are to be wood, uh, painted to match existing. In uh, the <coughs> roof uh, is to be asphalt, also to match existing. Doors are to be um, wood painted. And uh, this is a question, Andrew, the, that third story window on the front, was that approved mm -hmm. last time? Yes. Okay. Mike, just one thing. You said to match the existing, and we're changing them to two over two, and they're blank right now. So you're changing the front windows? Which, yeah, yeah, we're changing the windows in the front to two over two, like the drawing. That's what the original house. This is what the original house the had, but they replaced them to blanks. You okay. see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Is this a sash replacement or an entire window, new construction? No, new window. But you'll be removing the trim as a result of this? If we do, we'll put it right back. Um, okay. Are they, it's, are they, these? it's just the pain pattern yeah. that's incorrect. So the, these have sash weights? No. No. They're they're all replacement. Oh, they are. Yeah, they're they're oh, not I original. So I had a picture of the original house, which my husband threw away by mistake. But they um, it's not a good moment in our household. But the original <laughs> windows were this is what they were. They were those like they were like this. And I don't know when they replaced them. But this one, this one is original. The only one that's left that's original is that top one there. The rest of them are all replacements. I don't know when they were. So replaced, you're proposing like a, a, an all wood, single, um, true divided light. Yes. Five eighths mountain. Mm -hmm. So it'd be five windows, mm -hmm. and then the gable window, mm -hmm. a new configuration. Yes. So. We'll call those as true divided light. Yeah. So adding the five, replacement of five windows in the front of the house with uh, two over two true divided light um, windows with uh, five eighths muttons. And are we doing an, an option for the octagon window? Mm -hmm. Was that in there? 
Okay. We we haven't said that yet. Oh. So how do we want to handle that? Because it's you're not sure if you're going to replace it. You might. Right. It's it's going to remain in a bathroom, and it's a really small window in a bathroom right now. So if she wanted to replace it, just because of the shape of it, I'd re I'd suggest doing just a, a square. Well, window. if you're. I mean, you're going to come back with light I'll come back. fixtures. Yeah, sure, I'll so come maybe back. maybe that's I'll, I'll part of that. It. Yes. I mean, it seems we'll like an easy out. thing because mm -hmm. anything would probably be better yes. than that, but mm -hmm. because we don't know what it is. No problem. Maybe that's deferred. <coughs> Good idea. Okay. I think that's it. All right. Uh, second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Not me. <laughs> All right. Hey, Margaret. Good job. Thanks for coming in again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that was not a great moment. Okay. Uh, next up, uh, John Teriyaki is here to talk about just some revisions to 632 Main Street. Thank you for waiting. Sorry we're late. Oh, sure. No problem. Oh, Monica. Hi, good, how are you? Uh, so John Teriyaki, I'm helping with the design of the addition to 632 Main Street. I brought a little mini board today. Just to show, uh, Bless you. Bless you. following up from the past uh, hearing, there was, some, uh, there was a request to revise the portico, which we did, and I, it does look better. And we enlarged, uh, provided some enlarged details and also um, made a couple of other revisions, uh, but maybe I'll stop the portico. We basically turned it into a simple shed roof, uh, as suggested, and um, really uh, simplifying the column and turning it into a square column. So it's all uh, some of the basic dimensions are noted here. Um, and then next, the, uh, the, this bank of windows in the family room. There was a picture window in the middle. And there was a suggestion made to make uh, all of these repetitive double hungs, which we did, which seems to work well as well. And then the last thing was the correction on the window schedule, um, the type three window, which is being uh, inserted here, uh, is going to be a true divided light, and not a simulated divided light. So those were the three items that I had on my list. Yeah, and remember last time we um, we granted a certificate of appropriateness for uh, John to get started on on the project. The last main time. building, the main yeah. building, and the addition. And he's come back with just a couple minor items. Okay. So I, you're saying I don't think we we don't require a vote on this, but we've got we've got the revisions, the record of the revisions. So the drawings for the record. The drawings for the record. Right. Okay. okay. Is that? Sure. Yeah, I mean, we could take a vote, but I mean, if that's. If you want to, if you want to just vote, that's fine. Yeah. Vote to accept the yeah. modifications. So. Um. Ben can do that. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you have some comments about some of the dimensions, or. No. It's fairly fairly simple. Vote? We really don't, but at least. We looked it in, in yeah. description, and we you just did. brought back the. the the drawings to respond to what we had discussed, I think, right? Right, so I don't know if the, if the approval included the portico pending uh, the submission see. or if the approval excluded the portico. I, I'm not Let's sure about the technicality of yeah, that. Pending, uh, oh, if we take if we take a if we take a vote here on it, then we're we're, we're, we're covered either yeah. we're covered either way, correct? Let's just look. Uh, our decision was um, to grant a certificate of appropriateness to demolish an existing sunroom and chimney located at the rear of the house and to construct a family room in accordance with plans dated 6-27-18. Approval is contingent upon receipt of revised drawings for the portico and correction of the type 3 window on the window schedule to be true divided light. So I think it's all there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we don't need to vote. Okay. Thank you for coming in. One last vote. Okay. Great. <laughs> All right. Thank good. You. Thanks, John. Good night. Great. Thanks for waiting. Okay. <laughs> Looks nice. Thanks. Okay. Um, 
Last on the agenda in terms of um, applications is uh, 247 South Street. Uh, this is the, uh, the Morrisons. Um, the Morrisons would like to replace uh, five windows on the front of the house. Um, ben and I were out there earlier this week um, to, uh, to meet with Frank, who's here, and we took a look at the windows. But um, Frank, why don't you just go ahead and, uh, and tell us a little about the project. Um, update the rest of the commission. I'm Frank Ahern. Um, the Morrisons contacted me and they have seven windows in their garage they bought, uh, some Anderson windows. They're real nice windows. I'd love to use them, but um, I don't know if they um, are the right fit for this. So um, Ben and I were upstairs in the second floor and the, the windows in the dorm was aren't, they're only about 50 years old. So um, I don't think those would be a problem to replace. It's the three downstairs that are more original to the house. So uh, we just need to figure out what we can do to make these windows work for the Morrisons. Okay. So he, they've got, they've got, um, well, Ben, why don't you talk? They've got seven Andersons that are composite vinyl right, so a, that they were purchased two or three years ago. A previous, a previous contractor. Yeah. Y yes. And they're in their garage and they have, um, they're a, an Anderson product, it's called Woodwright. It does have vinyl on it. And they're not new construction, they're a replacement or remodel style. So what that just means is the sash is removed from the window, the trim stays, the jam stays, the sill stays, and then this window just sits in place of those two the two sash that were removed. Um, there is vinyl, it is exposed. They are a simulated divided light and they're, um, they're in their garage. Um, we looked at, and, and as Frank mentioned, the, the dormer windows are um, not original sash. Um, the two dormer windows facing the front. It looks to be any, it could be anywhere from the 50s to the 70s based on the milling of the sash itself. Whereas the windows in the bottom, the three that face, face the front, those are as near original as you can get for a house from the 17, what we yes. just believe to be 1760? 1750-ish, yeah. Um, the, some of the hardware is missing. The windows are stuck shut. These are windows that are old enough. They don't actually have sash weights or sash pockets. Instead, what they had was a mechanism on the side of the sash. You could lift the sash, and it had a little thumb catch, which would hold the sash at particular heights. Uh, the, the mechanism, I believe, is missing on all of them. Yes. Um, much of the glass has been replaced. The house was, the story is the house was abandoned uh, before they purchased in 1960, it was abandoned for eight years. Yeah, in like 1953 or something, it was abandoned. And so maybe kids were throwing rocks at the windows, but a lot of the windows, the panes, um, uh, I didn't see any original antique glass in any of the panes. Uh, it looked like they had all been broken and replaced with newer glass, but the sash was still there. And they could, um, uh, Someone that does restoration work could take a closer look, and I believe that those could be made uh, operational again. And any uh, most uh, restoration companies will have as salvage; they'll have these thumb locks and and other other hardware that would be appropriate for the period that they could retrofit and get the get the sash to work again. This is the, again the three windows facing the front on the first floor. Um, so it was my opinion that that the vinyl, the, the Anderson wood rights with vinyl wrap are not appropriate, um, unfortunately. Uh, but the windows up on the second floor could get replaced um, with a wood window, uh, true divided light, uh, something like a Brasco or other, other brand. Yeah. Uh, and then downstairs on the first floor, my recommendation was a, um, a restoration, uh, someone to come out and take a closer look and, and do a restoration work on the, on the first floor windows. Second floor was not worthy of restoration? So the, the sills aren't original anymore. Um, 
they they appear to be pressure treated that have been painted and even the pressure treated is now deteriorating in these dormers. Um, the jam tracks are now vinyl um, or excuse me aluminum um, and the sash are not original there's nothing there's nothing there. Uh, a true divided light upstairs in the gable. They are, yeah, they are true to light. But, would, but, but a new true divided light window would window would be an upgrade for what's yeah. there. Yeah. Oh yes. There now. They'd operate well. My thought with, with that was get a true divided light in Brosco with the extended historic sill, and then yeah. you can make it look fit into the dorm uh, the, the best. It, Right. A, a, a new construction and get the glass aspect ratio the same. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's unfortunate that they have, you know, a prior contractor got these these Anderson final windows and uh, and they're they're just all in their garage. They haven't even, they're, they're still in the boxes. So it's really, you know, this is a the couple that's been in the house since 1960 and uh, you know they're in they're in their 80s and you know um, I think Frank if. Uh, you know, if you were to go to Hingham Lumber and, and ask for a look, we got these seven windows, they live in the Historic Districts Commission, um, you know, a previous contractor ordered these, you know, can you take these back, you know, first step, second step, you know, um, can you give us a break on the new Brascos or the new, you know, the, uh, that would go up in the gable, so, I mean. Maybe help me sell them. So, something, you know, and, and, and something, maybe, yeah. and maybe. Mm -hmm. And maybe Andrea, Andrea could put a call into Hingham Lumber too, and kind of, and um, and just just say that this is kind of what happened, and that that might help out a little bit too, because I I think it's just I, I feel bad for the uh, the, the homeowners that uh, that have these windows in there. Yeah. No, um, Frank, did, is there? Um, do they still have the bill of sale for those windows? I wonder. I'm I'm sure I couldn't. Um, Find See it. if you can find it, because that would help hang us. Them, uh, uh, you know, maybe hang them one, but could track it for me. Yeah, there was a stamp on the, or there's a label on the boxes that uh, the Hingham Lumber puts on it that would have a PO number on it. Uh -huh. Yeah, so we could probably tra reference. track yeah. it and get the exact amount and all that. Yeah, and who ordered them? The PO number actually has the letters, the initials of the person who ordered them. Yeah, yes. So I think that's a good compromise for the dormer windows. Get the get the new ones. Um, I guess we need a game plan on what we should do on the first floor. I can work with you to recommend some people who do this work locally, um, and at least to get an assessment to determine whether how much work needs to be done. So all right, yeah. You and I will work that out, okay? All right. Um, so we have a uh, we have a specific application that says remove five front windows, trim um, trim frame and sash, install five new Anderson windows, install exterior casing to match existing trim. Um, you know, perhaps we can we can um, frame a frame a uh, a motion that would just uh, that would. Um, Talk about some of the elements that we were we've been discussing with with two new windows and true divided light and restoration on the bottom. That's amenable to everyone. Ben, what do you think about that? Yeah, makes sense. Ben can take a crack at that. I could, I could, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. So, okay. what's what's to spell out the motion for exactly kind of what what we were discussing with the two true divided light windows upstairs. Okay. Um, so so wood, I like wood. Right. You know, um, historic sill. Yeah, historic sill. Uh, I think they were going to do, um, I don't know what type of storm they want to put on, but. Um, I think the aluminum storm would work the best okay. for them um, to do a big heavy wood storm. Okay. Um, I, I don't think that would okay. be user friendly. Okay. And to restore the bottom. Okay, so I'd, I'd, I'd like to make a motion for a certificate of appropriateness, uh, 267 South Street. Is it, um, is it 247 or 267? No, it's 267. Um, Justin sent me an email and okay. pointed out that I had made an error, so I redid okay. 
the um, it's correct now. Good. Uh, okay, so uh, 267 South Street to um, remove and replace on the second floor dormers, two windows, two dormers. Uh, these would be a, an all wood, true divided light, um, historic sill, a trim, trim to match existing. And then on the first floor, the remaining three windows facing the front, um, an assessment by a, a window restoration company. And I guess. If they're not. Right. If I, I maybe we could say that if, if that doesn't work out. Frank then comes. Frank comes, comes back. back. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So we'd be interested in the assessment from the restoration company. All right. Okay. All right. Do we have a second? Second. Ronnie will second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Great. All right. Thanks for sticking around. Hey. Oh, no problem. Thank Appreciate you it. very much. All right. Thank you. All right. Good Thanks, luck. Frank. Right. You too. Best to the, um, to the Morrisons, too. Okay. Thanks. Okay. All right. Uh, Monica has an informal um, discussion regarding a a project on North Street. Oh, so, really nice. Two seventy nine North Street, and I've been working on it a little bit because it's that big white colonial on the corner of Burton's Lane, mm -hmm. and someone had tried to turn it into, I think, a Victorian by making a flare in the middle of the colonial. Is that it's Meadow View Farm? Is it yes, the okay. yes. And so the people who bought it, it's, it's really bad on the inside, which I know is not the thing, but you guys would love this. Somebody poured cement over the wide pine floors. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> to, make like, to make like a modern like cement look. Oh my and then when you go to the top of the stairs, it has that little balcony over the window over the door and you either choose A or B and you're in a bedroom. But to get to the back of the house, you have to go through bedrooms. So somebody else thought it would be a really good idea to take the front to back living room and build a giant modern square staircase to get to the second floor. So then now the living room's too small, the fireplace faces the back of a staircase, the um, dining room's too small, the kitchen's <laughs> terrible. It's, it's in the back corner. It's terrible. Um, the bedrooms, terrible. Bathrooms, terrible. <laughs> There's like nothing good left, except for the fireplaces in the middle. It has a third floor, and the attic space up there is amazing. It's really tall. It's really big. There's a couple of rooms at each side. It doesn't have a um, modern heating system type thing or anything like that. Now. What they need is, what everybody needs when they buy one of those houses, is they need a bigger kitchen, a master bedroom with a bathroom and a closet, and rooms for their kids, and a mud room. Everyone has to have a mud room. So I have been working with my drafter, who I know does not do the best plans. All right, I can say this because no one's in the room. but. It doesn't really matter anyway, because when we rip the whole thing open, none of the plans work anyway. So this is some drawing. I begged him. I, we, he already did one. I hated it. I said, really nice. Can you do, do it over? And then I did drawings on his drawings. And then I begged him to please try to give me something for the elevations for tonight. And I want to make the back of the house. I made it come in from the side. Like, you know, it's the main house is the main house. This is the addition. And I kind of want to do it in a different shingle like the house next door. So this is the left elevation. I, I, I could have made you all a million copies, except I don't have enough ink. <laughs> <laughs> if that's if I'm on Burton's Lane? Yeah. OK. So the white house is the house on Burton's Lane. Yeah. What's Those original? Are the windows that what's, are, a, what's original? What are you adding? The white is original. OK. And, every, and the those shingle, windows are already original. And the shingle you're adding? Yes, okay. which is 17 feet deep. And the porch. Into the backyard. Into the porch. In, yep, into the backyard. OK. OK. There's, there's nothing on the back of the building now? No. OK. It's a brick facade. Right. It's all brick, and it's just straight. 
and it looks like something like you'd see in a New York tenement building. I don't know. And it's not even real brick. It's fake brick. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and, so this is the left rear. Now I know that this thing looks big. I, I got to tell you that it's 17 feet. Okay, the ridge under the ridge. The How thing. wide is it? I mean, it looks. It's okay. So it's not as wide as the back because I'll show you. <laughs> this is the right elevation. So this already exists. This buff out part. The porch already exists. So it's here, 17 feet out, but it doesn't extend over to this side. So it doesn't meet the entire width of the back. How, how, what, what size return there? Steps it back is, by how much? I'll, wait, I'll show you. It's, um, you'll see it right here. Look. Okay. So it's almost the width. It looks like it's the width of the original house, it's not about, including that little bump up. Yes. Right? So we originally. Monica, tried, show. Show, yeah. Mac. Sorry. I'm sorry. We originally had a smaller drawing where it just came out sort of as an L with a kitchen. But the problem is with that is A, the homeowner doesn't think it's big enough. He wants an office on the second floor. Um, and the other thing is they want to get into the attic. With or without, I know there's dormers on this on this thing. With or without the dormers, they want the attic space. So I need to put, and I need to take that giant staircase out of the living room. It's a new, new staircase. Yeah, oh, and, and, and it's it's like it's a big modern square staircase yeah. with this little weird square window that's modern in it, and it leads to the side of the house that currently they're not using as the master, but. It's actually, um, if you take the staircase out of that side, they have a big side for the master bedroom. There's a room there that they can have their master bathroom. There's a closet there. And the other side, which they're using as their master bedroom, they can have two bedside tables next to their bed. So I turned that into two kids' rooms, a front and a back with a Jack and Jill. The attic space, so they want a staircase that goes from the basement to the attic. So it's going to be where the current bulkhead is, inside of the house, splitting the new living room. Sorry. We'll start down with Mac. You can just take a look. Start, start down there. You can look at them all together. Pass them down. And I have to say, I kind of like that. I was very surprised this afternoon when I opened it up. Monica, what are the what are the dimensions of the of, of your proposed? It's 17, 17 feet deep. Right, the projection off the back, and then the other dimension. I would say it's this whole side of the colonial, so the whole side of the front of the colonial, so. Whatever the length of the. Yeah, colonial. I would say 30. So it doesn't it doesn't step in on the other side. It steps in on both sides. It steps in a lot on the side where they already added something. Right. It, or it appears to step in because they added something to that side. The other side, I stepped it in. I didn't step it in a lot. I stepped it in minimally because that's the kitchen and where those three windows are is kind of like a weird transition space. So I thought I would do like a banquette with a table there. So there'll be like a jog in the kitchen wall, but I didn't want to make it huge. The other thing is because the staircase has to go where it because the staircase has to go where it is, if I move this staircase any more, because it's, if I move it any more towards that kitchen corner, the kitchen becomes too narrow. All the kitchen is right now from front to back is a 24 inch counter, a 40 inch space, a 24 inch island, and a 40 inch space, and the stairs. So if I, if I, so then there's the stairs and they're double wide because they're going like this. Okay, so then they take up that much space. And then beyond it is the dining room, which goes out into that patio area where the back door is. Yeah. So that's the entire width of it. <clears throat> so when we had originally done it, the dining room area didn't exist. So we had the stairs and the kitchen, and it's just not big enough for them. So there, there's a cottage in the back, right? Yeah. How, how close is this addition to the cottage where it bumps out? Far. There's, um, Can you give me feet? Yeah. Um, 25. Okay. Maybe 30. Would be the closest points? Yeah. Because the um, cottage, they have two big raised bed gardens that are at least eight feet with space in between them. 
and then they have a front yard, and then they have the, um, it's like a ranchy cottage looking thing. Monica, what, um, so here, here's some of my, just my initial comments. It's tough to see from all this, but um, I would ask you square footage. Yeah, I'll get all that. Initial yep. to what you have now. Um, this looks like it was all built at the same time. It, it, there's a way to kind of get some differentiation between, you know, and I know you're, you're working right. with something, that, something that's, I know it's difficult, but it looks like it was all built at the same time together. And it just, um, to me, to me, especially this one, it just looks like it was, all right, we're, we just, we just built this house. You, you know what I mean? It's like, we just built this. That, that, I understand what you're saying, except that that part there is at least 10 feet in. I know. On I the know, back. But you I'm know what I mean? You can't. Just looking at this, and I don't know how you how you do it, but it just looks like everything was built at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, it's just. Maybe it's the the massing. This kind of is is kind of the massing of this. Maybe there's a way to kind of make this look okay. visually smaller. What about uh, the porch going? What about the porch and, extending? And the same with this too. It just even though it's shingle. I love that. Even though it's shingle, it just that's going like to look really good. The just, people on Burton's Lane are going to love that. So what what you have? <clears throat> I'm sorry, Hans. What no, you have here is. There's a very large gable that's that's more pronounced than the gable of the original home. Yes, you're right. You've, you've brought you've brought your ridge down, which is good, but now you have this gable here, which is as long, which is as wide as the house is long. That's what it and is. And so I think that's what's throwing. Okay. That's what it is, Ben. How about I split the giant gable into one gable and two sheds, so they still have the same width, but it's not such a huge gable. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, you know how sometimes in the back you'll have like a gable and a gable with a shed in the middle, but it's still taking up the width? I need to be able to get up there into the third floor. Because yeah. the staircase that's in there going up to the third floor now, you know what, it's one of those yeah, sure. like... It's very narrow, yeah. yeah. I've actually been in the house. Did um, you see the cement floors? No, um, we must have been the previous owner or a couple owners prior. And she have, seemed she seemed to um, be a good steward to the house. Um, I mean, I know I know it's a it's an aluminum sided house, and you know. Not anymore. Oh, was that changed? Oh, I you're going to you're going to change that. She um, did. They have wallpaper in the powder room, which is Kelly green and silver, and it's rats and trash cans above the above the wainscot. <laughs> It's from that whole rats and trash can period. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it went with like the floors. <laughs> so, Monica, I'm not sure entirely what you what you were proposing as an alternative to the, the wide single gate. Well, it would still be as wide, yeah. but I'd change the roof line so that the ones on the side would be more, say, square, and the front would be the because I need the peak in the middle to get to the third floor. Yeah, you want that ridge height. Yeah. I have to ask the architects. I think that's what. Should we send this proposing. back down to Mac as well? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm trying to decrease my amount of m months. I think that's what she's saying. We're just talking about this in the back? Like a Nantucket dorm? Yeah. Two or one with two on the sides. Show me a you know what I mean? The center one and then two on the sides. I think it's a matter of uh, massing and scale. It feels like it's kind of doubling the size of the building. At the yeah. So it's, yeah, it's hard to sort Don't of... Don't you think that that could possibly be due to this 3D um, picturing? Because the building, you know what I think we need? is a site visit. A site visit. Yeah, uh, not ne uh, next time we come. But you know, all, I know what you're saying. but. If the entire house is twice as wide as the addition, because the width of the house is not 17, and the the part coming out is 17, do you know what I'm saying? So it's half the size. But you, but the, the you really need drawings to huh? figure that out, right? You need. Mm -hmm. I think if you do it in elevation, it's going to look large as well because there's no perspective there. Exactly. Right. As long as I don't have to build the model. And why didn't you want to do an L? 
because it's not wide enough for the staircase and the kitchen to both be in the back and for him to have a, a, the dining room that's why I think, I think, I think the, the historic home kind of wants an L you know I think it wants something a little bit narrower well that's a point but here's another issue that comes up there's a house when you go up Burton's Lane on the left hand side it's on North Street it used to have it has really dark sh shingles and it got renovated by someone and then purchased by somebody um, after it got renovated and the it's it, it the back of it is the, not in at all on either side it's big in the back and so these people can see that from there and it's yeah. is this our is Burton's part of our jersey well North no, Street it's is. North. Their house base is north, Street. same oh, as this. So same I have this. to go and look. Monica told me about it, and I haven't had time. Okay. It's dark, dark shingles. <laughs> it has a common driveway with a white house. It's heading more towards Bale Street when you pass Burton's Lane. There's a little white house in the corner that's sold recently with black shutters. It's the next house. has a light blue door. Okay. Um, so from the back, they have an entrance. They have a, a cut through on Burton's to get into their backyard. They recently built like a little shed that they came for with a green door. Um, that, the back of their house is as wide and as big as their house. Um, recent, kind of a recent, maybe 10 years, eight years, would you say, Andrea, eight? Wait, I can't, I don't know. I'm gonna we don't have, have a concept of time. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway. But I'll try to do something. So can you take some of the comments that we've given yes. you tonight and, yes. and incorporate them maybe into um, some drawings that yep. we, can, we can look at for, uh, for next time? Mm -hmm. and, then, um, and then maybe we could come out and see the site yeah. with, with those drawings sure. at some point? No problem. With that. Yep. Thank you so much. Because okay. I don't want to just keep going. Any other thoughts, Mac? I didn't want to cut you off. Are you yeah. down here? I really like Good. So, uh, if, if Monica, if you feel like you have the what you were looking for in terms of I do, I'm responses good. or answers. I think I'll just try to, I, I'm not going to try, I'm gonna, I can't get it to be an L because it isn't what they want for square footage um, and room placement, but I'm going to try to take the second floor and make it seem not as large. Yeah, I mean, we, we have specific, um, you know, we, we ask, I don't have my criteria right here in terms of evaluating new that. additions, but we specifically ask a question, is the addition more than 50% in terms of square footage massing um, over the size of the, uh, you know, the original house? Mm -hmm. So you, you're, you're kind of up against that question a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, and we, you know. Well, the back of it, the first and second floor wouldn't be, but when you add the third floor right. so portion. When, when you add that massing, you know, that's kind of what we're looking at, all that, mm -hmm. that volume, you know, relative to the initial. So that's one of the criteria. So just, just kind of, you've got the worksheet, so be aware of that. Mm -hmm. Monica, did you want to talk about um, what you mentioned today about the garage? Yeah. Okay, on Main Street, on 100 Main Street. <clears throat> Remember the 100 Main Street thing? Okay, so the Ben, ben we're going to go. Yeah, we're going to go back to saying Ben is Ben is correct. So, a couple things. So, the purchase price of cedar is even in these kind of houses is really becoming an issue. So, just the gable gables alone in the fish scale, just the fish scale for the gables alone, ninety nine hundred dollars. Right. Wow. The band of the Alaskan broken shingle going all the way around is uh, almost in the sixes. The clapboard is the most bargain part, but there's not that much of it on the front. So it's done to the point where the big band is that goes around it. The fish scales are going to go up there. I've ordered them. We have them. It's happening. But the big band is there, and at one point, I remember, Ben, you were saying that you think that the three things was kind of a lot on the house, and that's what's happened. It's, it's the band area for the band has to be woven on each corner, goes all the way around, woven on the back corner, lots of labor, lots of white cedar that you're never going to see because it's sitting in the hill. You can't see it here, you can't see it here, and it's expensive, and it's busy. So the homeowners want to know if they can do the fish scale, the big band, and then just collapse. 
and forget the band in the middle. I should so, so I'm looking at the gable that faces main. Yep. Do you have it? Yep. So this was one of the things that we originally had had looked at before we did the middle thing. And this showed fish scales, the windows, which are in. We have a bigger band here now, but to, but the size is correct. To put the um, broken shingles and weave them and make this woven corner that's curved, flared right here, mm -hmm. even though it matches the house, and that was sort of the thing, and everyone was saying you don't have to do it, but I thought it was important. This structure is so much smaller than the side of the house that it seems like I'm trying to cram it in there. I'm not just saying it from a financial point. I'm that financially, it's it's killing them. But on top of that, it's to me, it feels too busy. It feels like I'm cramming it in there. Are you are you getting rid of the bell? Yeah, we would just Can go straight. Monica, show, show the, the other. Clapboard. Show the other end too. I mean, show it to Mac and. Oh. Yeah, maybe. And Virginia back. and Ronnie, the other half of the you table. What she wants to do? I'm not, I'm not clear on it. I'm almost. I think it's all so. these cross cables, and this is in. These are in. This is all done. And Pardon we me. Have clapboards, but the house has a bell. Yeah, I remember this. And, the house um, next to the bell tower, right? Yeah. Is this the bell with the garage. And it has okay. like this flare. Do you want to see, want to see a drawing? I mean, I don't know what. I, 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 I mean, I like to see a drawing. I haven't seen. I don't know what they're. It's not clear to me. Right. With the bell. I mean, yeah. unless you guys can visualize it. <laughs> so the bell is gone, the, the corner boards come all the way up and hit the soffit. We haven't done it at all yet, but that's what that's they're proposing. The, is that what you're proposing? Okay. So they told me to ask. How yeah. much space between the top of the There's garage a picture. door trim and the underside of the soffit? How tall top. is that? It's, um, well, you're going to see a, a, a a drawing right there of it, you're going to see it. Um, but I would say that the box that we made to then have the flare underneath it is pretty substantial. So it's, and then the, the trim that was going to go on it was just like five inch trim around the door because the flare came down to the five inch trim. So my proposal would be to make a bigger header and then to just have it be clapboard. But you're going to remove the stru substructure that makes the flare. We haven't built it yet. Oh, okay. That's why. That's why we're, I made them leave today. Okay. So the question is for the board: Is would you consider this um, a minor modification, or would you consider this more major, so that you would want? Uh, the gables are up. The roof is on. The trim is done. It's just the center section. Yeah. Um, the flare, and uh, I'm just not sure what this is going to look like, Monica. That's the only thing I, I'm well, stumbling with. Okay, you you have this. I got the drawings. So, so is this is this what it's going to look like? Yeah. And the top's going to be um, the top's going to be the fish scale as directed. W what do you mean the top? The, the two gables. windows are the gables. Okay, so this all is this all is fish scale. Oh, that's fish roof, scale. Roof. Okay. There's a picture of the house. <coughs> okay. And do you have a drawing of what we approved? Um, I didn't bring it with me because I just dropped. Is this? Is it right there? I think it might be right here because I was trying to put the flame. No, I didn't bring it. Um. This house. Yeah. What's <coughs> Monica or Ben or, or Mike, can you draw right kind of See what the we? Yeah. But look at how much space there is. <clears throat> yep. Ben was right. He said to me, if you try to stick the, the broken thing in there in the middle, it's going to be so busy and it's going to be tight. So uh, this is a better picture. The proposal. The, okay, yeah. This is the yeah. proposal would be all clapboards. These are now corner boards coming all the way up. And before there was a flare. Mm -hmm. Right. But not built yet now, and, and so that's what. Yeah. And you, your proposal is a larger garage trim to yeah, help on the, close and the header. in that. Yes, that. on the header. So it looks like you've got. This looks like a four-foot sheet here. I mean, that looks almost like a square to me. So that would be four by four. So that looks like four feet that you're covering with clapboards. 
because I want to say that the um, that the cedar broken cedar flared thing is two and a half feet. Yeah. My 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 gut is to see a drawing. Um, uh, of the of the original one. No. Of, of what Change. you're proposing. Okay, hip. I'll do it. I'll, I'll I'll do it. But but Monica, here's something to consider what happens is when it gets printed on this the proportions get all messed yeah, up yeah 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 and it's not representative of what you're truly building right so i would just ask that the proportions ca be kept intact why can't i just take a picture of the existing thing and draw it on that sure. i mean that could work too i mean that might give it a little more accuracy right because um, we'd have something we'd have something right. like this yeah if you sketch mm -hmm. over so I think if you did that, Monica, okay. and then and then got Andrea of uh, uh, that photo, mm -hmm. and then she can email it, um, scan it, and then our commission members can take a look sure. at it, and then because you know I, I don't think this is kind of a wait to a next meeting thing, you know, so because I, I think this could be just kind of a field change. Yeah. So, um, but just just let us know what you're doing because okay. I'm having difficulty visualizing it. I, so. I think the simplification is is the right thing to be doing because adding the bell in there is, th is too much. It's too uh, much for I, I tend to agree with that. That where the bell is on the main house, there's a whole story about it. Exactly. That's why I brought the picture of the three sections. So and when you stand kind of back and you try to visualize it, you're like, why are you doing all that? Which you said. Thank okay. you. For, thank you for coming in, though, and telling us. And then, you, and then you can send an email out to ev everyone, that. and then we could just kind of say yes or no, or I've yeah, got more or questions. Yeah, just reply to me only. It, yeah, because it, 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 it happened like a couple days ago, and, and I said to them today, you know what, you guys, I don't want you to go there today, because they're on the trim, and they're on the making the bell. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thanks. Okay. And Bye. thanks for bringing it to us, night, our, our, Monica, to our you. attention. Sorry. It took so long. That's all right. Um, can you approve the minutes, please? Oh, minutes. We have minutes? We do have minutes. Yeah. <coughs> Beautifully done minutes. Why, by the thank way. you very much, Jeff. <laughs> Anybody have any questions or comments about the minutes? The only thing I was wondering is did we talk about a form? Um, did we, was this the meeting that, or was that the June meeting? I couldn't remember that we discussed um, the form for the demolition and discussed that. We did. Yes, we do that now. I think we meeting? did that. Yes, we did that. Um, just need a just sentence about the form here. Sure, I can do that. We'll um, do. So let's maybe we just give a version sentence. Um, uh, the commission um, uh, voted on and approved a um, guidelines for for, for, for demolition. demolition. Right. Thank you. Um, by a vote of was it unanimous? It was unanimous. It was unanimous. Yeah. Vote. Okay. And I said I'd get you an affidavit, which I haven't done. Once I looked at that, I realized I hadn't. Oh, done okay. That line, which I will. Thank you. That to you. Okay. All right. I have to give credit to my friend Sherry here, who right, is Sherry. the bomb. She <laughs> did. Um, a, she did a great job on a first draft, and mm -hmm. right. I was able to add to it, and there we go. Thank, Thank you. Sherry. And Artful so. use of bold versus <laughs> not bold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We have we have never received minutes from the previous meeting in the next meeting. I mean, look, this is like that hours is worth of minutes. No, no offense, Andrea, but she's she's busy. <laughs> Andrea is she's very great. busy. She's busy. This is Sixty minutes at least. <laughs> no. All right. Great. Any questions? I was just in regarding 85A Main Street. Yes. Oh, I'm. I should. Tell, I'm that? sorry about that. I, I intended. What happened there was that um, <coughs> Mr. Goggin um, came in the next day, and he said, "I, I don't think that this property is in the historic district." So I said, I'll "Look at the map," and sure enough, he is correct. The originally engineered map shows the boundary right on the edge of that particular house. How it ended up over the years on our inventory saying that it was in the Pear Tree Hill District, I can't explain, but it was an error. 
So I told Mr. Goggin that he was correct and um, he was very gracious and said, well then I guess we have to go through the Historical Commission. I said yes. And so the Historical Commission then went um, to make a site visit and we walked through the property. Um, the house, well first of all let me preface this and I'm going to send you the, the decision. All right, so that you can read it all. But essentially, th there was nothing about the house, very, very little, um, that I could find in my research. And it had been owned by the church, um, the Baptist church, for a number of years. And, um, and it ceased being a residence, I think, when the church bought it, which was, I think, 49. Um, so anyway, and they used it for special programs and things, but um, truthfully, the, the only thing, and I asked, um, I asked Ben Wilcox to take a look as well, and the only thing that really was um, original to the house or worth saving were the windows, but of course they were, they're all lead. Um, you know, the glazing is lead. So um, hopefully they will be able to salvage those windows. Um, they'll donate them to whoever wants them. Um, they were in actually good, very good shape. Hmm. So the commission uh, did vote to allow the demolition. It's going to be, um, they're going to leave that as open space. Hmm. So. There we have it. And I will send you the decision so you can read all about it. So thank you for bringing that up. I was remiss. Thank you for the clarification. Okay. Sherry, um, 85A, you can take out by and bold. You can just make it just as a minor. Got that? Yeah. And then um, my last name is a small d, just to be Oh, fair. I should have caught that and I didn't. For precision. Everything else is great. Good. Okay. I think motion to else. approve the minutes? Yes. Second. Can I make a motion to approve the minutes? As amended. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Opposed? Okay. Awesome. Anything else tonight? Okay. Um, I'd like to make a motion to conclude the meeting of the Historic Districts Commission. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thanks very much.